All right, welcome back to the Gill Athletics Connections podcast. I'm super humbled to be your host, Mike Cunningham at, where am I? I'm at Gill Athletics. Uh, it's early in the morning. We're doing an awesome interview. You've already seen the marquee, the name. I'm super excited to jump in. Help me welcome the head coach from Marion Military Institute in really gorgeous Alabama because I'm that's why I consider home as Alabama. Help me welcome head coach, the wise, the wonderful, Mr. Chad Valentine. Chad, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? I love it, man. I'm doing awesome. How is my, you know, I don't get back to my, what I call my, I was born in Florida, but I consider Alabama my home state. Uh, how, are, how are things in my, in my great uh, state of Alabama there? It's going well. It's, uh, it's, it's rained every day for the last three or four days. So um, we're dealing with, a, uh, dealing with a lot of rain, but outside of that, we're, we're doing well. We're trying to, we're trying to train and as long as it's not lightning, we're, we're in, we're outside. So no, no uh, when we're recording this, there is huge, like, unbelievable flash flooding in dallas you're not getting that kind of rain are you we haven't had anything like that yet I, uh, a lot of what we're getting is just steady rain by the time it gets it gets to us so uh hasn't been hasn't been too bad it has been cooler though so that's that's quite nice for mid-august and so um nobody's um nobody's complaining about that part so i was gonna say it's it's probably hard to believe but i played high school football in alabama and so these are the day, these are the dog days of august right here the preseason <laughs> the two a days it was miserable uh, uh we loved rain because it was we didn't stop practicing they didn't you know we still had to practice but at least it was cooler exactly right, right. well let's right. talk about something cool man let's talk about you uh super excited to have you here man we you know our goal is to uplift and honor coaches from around the country and we purposely work to get coaches from all levels right so we've had summer aau coaches high school coaches division one division two juco nai i think i'm to the point where we haven't missed a um a, a division so we you know we've had coaches from all and i love that because it doesn't matter the name on your chest maybe you've heard that from your athletes right you, you say that when during recruiting but it doesn't matter for you coach what name is on your chest you as a coach the person who chooses to be a track and field coach are important and have amazing positive impact on young people so it doesn't matter what division it doesn't matter how many people are on your team your story matters and i'm excited to jump into your story chad so right. let's let's get into it you know at some point assuming that you were an athlete at some point coaching changed for you it, it went from something that was done to you you know your coach told you to go run or jump this and that and you did it somewhere in your mind it had to change had to flip for you and be like oh wait a minute this is something i can become like this could actually be my job i could be a coach one day when does coaching as a profession enter your mind i, I would say in in my in my experience uh, you know in, in my past and background and that, and that kind of thing is um in in the mentor the mentorship so you know when in high school when I finally decided to come out for track and then, and then fell in love with it. And, um, uh, coach Killen was a huge, uh, Nathan Killen was, a, a, was a big impact. And, um, just seeing him being able to, um, make an impact on our lives as well as other teachers and coaches, you know, um, at that time. So, um, a lot of, it, a lot of it kind of happened during that, during that span. Um, uh, and then it was sort of reassured, you know, at the junior college level when I, when I went off to, um, to college. And so, um, so, you know, Jason Marshall was such a, was such a mentor seeing his impact on, on the girls, on the girls, we had only women's, uh, um, cross country and track. And, um, they were supposed to have, um, a men's team to start at, back at, at that time at Bell state and, and, and what, what it was, didn't happen. So, uh, we sort of ended up there on leadership scholarship somehow, me, <laughs> me and a few others. And so, um, kind of, kind of went from there. So just, just saw an opportunity to make an impact. Didn't really want to, ne never really had any, um, plans to be a teacher or anything, um, like a high school teacher or anything like that, but, you know, saw the opportunity to maybe um, go into college coaching and, and decided to sort of take it, take it that route. You know, a lot of people don't know much, like when you just said Bevel State, like a ton of people just hit pause to go Google what and where is a Bevel State. Um, it, it, and it's really funny for guys like you and I who know Bevel State and know some of the people that have come from Bevel State how yeah. impactful Bevel State not only has been on obviously Alabama and education and leadership, but specifically in track and field, <laughs> track and field coaching. Uh, so it's it's interesting that you know Bevel State at the time when you were going in, no men's program uh, and a women's program, and now I don't know if they've re-added. Do they? They have no program now. I think so. Right? They so um, as my journey went, I was able to go back and take over as head coach for a couple of years. Um, 
uh, 09 through 2011, um, before all of the programs that was left were cut. So they cut all the rest of the athletics while I was there. And so um, at that time, there was four sports remaining. And um, But the since, they, in the last few years, they have added back uh, several sports. And so um, they, they've started adding back volleyball and um, I think basketball and some other things. So um, they're actually looking to add cross country within the next year or two as well. So, um, so there's some things coming. There's some things coming back around. And um, but you're right on that. There's been there's been some people to come through Bevel State and um, some, um, coaches. I can name off probably five or six, you know, or at least just right now that um, that have um, that are still coaching track and field at either the college or high school level. So um, it's uh, it's definitely. Um, and I was that fortunate. I'm fortunate to know every one of the, them. So, so it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. That's what I love about it. Again, you know, 99% of the people listening right now have no idea about Bevel State and the impact that it's made on young people, not only young people who have gone on to become great coaches, but their impact on more young people, more athletes out there. It's really quite amazing. That's why it doesn't matter if you are the coach at the University of Florida. I always use Mouse as my example because I love them to death. Uh, if you're Mouse on the podcast way back in the day or now at Marion Military Institute, the, the impact you have it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, where you're at. It's, it's unbelievable, man. It's really, really positive. So you started thinking about coaching track and field because of uh, people that poured into your life. You mentioned coach Killen and coach Marshall. What was it about them? As you, you think back as your time as an athlete under them and your time with them, what attributes did they have that you kind of, it kind of sounded like you wanted to emulate like, Oh man, I, I want to do that. I want to be that. What, what was it about them? Well, you know, you know, those guys and, and, and you know, Brian Smith was a, was a teacher as well that in, in high school that was or he was actually our um, middle school teacher in fifth grade and then went on to teach us in the sixth grade. And um, and some of those teachers along that time just sort of they were almost they ended up being almost like older brothers and sisters as we moved through high school. Um, so, you know, with with all those people, we were, we were very blessed that my, myself and the, and the guys and the girls I grew up with to have wonderful families and, you know, just grew up with um um, with great people and, and we're, we're surrounded by great people and, and our teachers and our um, coaches were phenomenal. Um, so what they kind of took with them was it was it was the relationships that they could that they could build with um, with us and with, and with other people. And, and it, you know, you saw pretty quick that it wasn't about them. It was about uh, it was about us. They cared about us. And as long as we were good, they were good. And so um, it was a matter of, um, you know, um, you know, kind of loving, loving on people. Um, and, and, and that was, that's kind of been, um, my deal the whole time. I just told my athletes last week that, you know, I've, I've been blessed to be at, be at some great institutions over the years and, and, and work with some great people and you know, colleagues and mentors and things. And so, um, but my approach has sort of always been, if, if you surround yourself with good people, the rest of it will take care of itself. And so, um, that, that's, that's just kind of, um, where I am with, um, with that. And, you know, and those guys were, were a huge impact, um, you know, and, and just, they, I, you know, daylight to dark and, 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 and more so, and, and you, you've seen it be, um, well, as you know, and, and as every coach knows, it's, it's not, it's not just a training. If, if that were, if that were all of it, it would, um, <laughs> it'd be a, be a super easy job, you know, and, you know, and, you know, so, um, we, but, um, you know, whatever, 70, 75% of it is recruiting and, and building relationships with, with, with athletes and families from the start. And, you know, whether that's their, you know, back into their junior year or on, um, in high school or, or whatever. So, um, you know, just, just seeing their, um, their ability to, you know, relate, um, relate to people and, and put their themselves in other people's shoes and, and, and care about us, um, was a big deal for, for me. And, um, uh, you know, it's things that you take with you, you know, um, as you get older and, um, you know, and you appreciate it a lot more as you get older as, as well. You know, I think that's super important and bears, uh, it's, it's smart to restate what you just said there about that. It's not just the training, you know, this, this profession, this calling of coaching track and field on any level, by the way, high school, college, doesn't matter. Uh, it is hard. You, you nailed it, right? It, it would be, uh, I don't want to overstate it, but it, it would be super easy, right. To coach if it was just, X's and O's. If it was just to show up on the track for a few hours a day and teach someone how to run faster, jump farther, throw farther, right? Uh, but there is so much more to it. In fact, that part might be 
maybe the 20% part and then 80% is the people you're in a people profession, right? So the relationships, recruiting, and all the other things that you have to do as a coach, especially specifically as a head coach. So scheduling, budgeting, um, academic support, et cetera. It's, it's so much more. It, it's interesting that I think, you know, we've had several guests here in the past several months that have echoed exactly what you just said there. It's, it's interesting that, so it seems like a lot of people would agree with you. However, when we go, uh, we mentioned earlier convention, you know, USTF CCA convention, which I can't wait. That's one of my favorite times of year. It's kind of like early Christmas for me uh, to get to see everybody and hang out. Uh, but when we go to convention, a lot of the sessions are about the X's and O's and not as many. Now they are doing a better, a, a better job, I think, of adding other things. So there's been like this director of operations uh, right. track. There's been, uh, of course, the women in coaching uh, symposium uh, has been amazing now for probably getting on close to, to a decade here. Uh, so there is more, but still 90% of it is, hey, go listen to coach teach you how to train, uh, throw the javelin farther, or how to do the, you know, 10k better, etc. So something we need to do better in our profession uh, for professional development, I think for the people who choose to be coaches is all the other stuff <laughs> that is, makes up 80% of it. Right. So that's great. I love that, uh, you know, coaches and people poured into you. It, it was interesting as you were recanting that story, I, you know, I was thinking of this young 16, 17, 18 year old Chad, and, you know, you were thinking, you, you were saying about how the, the coaches, you know, they poured into you, they loved on you, uh, supported you, N not to pigeonhole people, because I don't like doing that. Uh, however, 16 to 17 to 18 year olds are typically not the most uh, selfless people. By the way, hands up, I'm guilty. I was very selfish as a 16 year old. And I probably thought more that my coaches owed it to me to coach then the reverse, like, oh, they're doing, like, they're helping me. Like, I felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm showing up. So you have to coach. What was it about you as a, as a kind of a high school teenager that you were able to kind of recognize that early that, oh man, these, these coaches are like big brothers and big sister, like, like they're like almost like an extension of family. Did, did that come from um, a background in, in the church? Was that parents who were teachers? Where does that kind of, that, that's a different type of recognition for a, for a teenager. Well, I think, you know, I think it um, most certainly our, our families um, played, a, played a role in that. You know, um, my, you know, my family in particular, my mom and dad are absolutely ph phenomenal. Um, my mom just celebrated her 65th birthday yesterday. And so um, oh, happy thought, birthday. Um, so despite her telling me I didn't need to do it, I, you know, I drove two hours last night to North to Coleman and they drove an hour and a half down so we could eat dinner together, just turn around and come back. And so. Um, but you know, it was important to me that I got to, got to see them, uh, last night. So, um, you know, our mom and dad, you know, our, our moms and dads were, 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 were great. I mean, we had, you know, we had great, great families, um, you know, and, and like you said, you, you talked about, you know, the, you know, the extension of, of our families were, you know, were the coaches and that, that's a lot of, that, that is a lot of what, what it was. It was the, it was the similarities of, of seeing them care as, as much, or, you know, at least, a close second, you know, as far as, you know, like our, like our parents and, and, you know, you knew that you knew they had your back. I mean, coach Killen, he'd be the first to tell you that he didn't, he didn't always know exactly uh, um, what to tell me in the high jump or whatever, or, or Keith in the, or in the long jump or whatever it might be. He was a football guy and he was learning kind of on the fly himself, but, um, but, you know, he sort of turned us loose. And, and in fact, we were talking about that back at the first of May at the state uh, championships in Gulf Shores, because, He's back to coaching track now for the first time in, in like uh, several years. His, his boys have gotten on up a little bit older and they're throwing and stuff. So he's been reaching out to Keith and I for <laughs> for, uh, for the latest uh, information on uh, on what to what to do. He's like, you guys have been you know rolling with it a lot a uh, lot more and, and deeper than and than I have. So, um, but you know we we had uh, uh, it, it, they it's hard to explain. Like we um, in in a lot of ways it was one of those things where. Um, I, I wish everybody could have been a part of what I was growing up. Um, I, as I've grown into this profession and I've seen kids come out of high school and move, uh, move into college um, and, and got to know some of their backgrounds. Like um, I hate so much, it kills me, it hurts my heart knowing that, you know, they, they couldn't experience what I experienced as far as, you know, we didn't, um, you know, we didn't always have everything we wanted, but we had everything we needed kind of thing. So, um, you know, and that was, that was, we, we were surrounded by, phenomenal people um you know that was that was the biggest thing I, I think you know um 
you know, a lot of those guys and, and girls I grew up with, you know, Keith and, and, and you know, I keep obviously saying Keith because he's in the same profession that, you know, that I am. So, but, you know, we, uh, you know, they'd be the first to also tell you that, you know, we, we had something special and, and we knew that I think then um, we know that more now, you know, 20 something years later and, um, you know, post high school. So um, it's, uh, it was something to be a part of. And, 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 that, and a lot of that, you know, like I say, it did, it stemmed from our, um, from our teachers and coaches, um, um, you know, and it was, which was a branch off of our, our families. Being blissfully unaware it is sometimes an underrated skill because you don't know when you're in it. Right. Uh, I, as you're telling that, and you're talking about uh, your high school coach who now is back into it, which I love uh, there, there is no uh, a, a age date. There's no uh, expiration date on coaching. I love that, that he's back into it, especially saying he had his own kids are, you know, it's throwing. So that's even more special coaching your own kids. Uh, but I started thinking about my own high school uh, coaches uh, who, you know, now that I know what I know now and how to coach, like they didn't know anything and they would be the first to admit it. So I'm not bashing them in that case. But as we were doing the workouts, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I know that they were awesome and I loved being around them and they would have told me to run to the moon and back. And I'm like, all right, I guess I got to run to the moon and back. Like I just trusted them. Uh, now looking back, I can see that, you know, okay, well, they didn't know what they were doing, but I also realized they had limited choices on how to get better as a track coach as well compared Absolutely. to today. Like now I don't want, I still don't necessarily want to say, and I probably have said this on the podcast that there's no excuse on not getting better. H however, there is, and there are much valid excuses, right? Your own family life, uh, you know, track for guys like you and I are number one, but you know what? Some track coaches, it's number 10, you know, their family teaching science for the high school and middle school and maybe coaching football and uh, their hobby of playing, I don't know, Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, those go higher. And, and that's okay. That's all right. Can you imagine a world where everybody had track and track coaching is number one? I, I don't know that that would be as as great as we think it might, the utopia that we want to think it is. <laughs> right. Well, uh, you know, we, um, you know, my buddy and I were at, uh, at the world championships out in, out in Oregon last month. And, um, uh, that he, he also, he, you know, was on the high school track team with myself and he's a high school track coach now and, and teacher and stuff. So um, he and I and, and, and Keith were out there together and, you know, it was his first time there and my second and, you know, Keith's been there a lot of, a lot of times, but, you know, we, it was a whole new world just hanging out at the Wild Duck Cafe because, you know, th that many people is excited about track and field and it's on every, every TV and everybody's going crazy and it's not football and, you know, we're not sitting in Tuscaloosa, Alabama or Auburn, Alabama or, you know, or Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, uh, so it's not, uh, so it's not football, it's track. So, you know, that's a, that's a different world, you know, for somebody like, like us that, you know, that, that we, like you said, we, we do love track and field and, you know, it's our, um, uh, it's our sport and it's, you know, it's, it's what we, um, you know, kind of built our profession around, but, you know, it's, you know, obviously, you know, beneath, you know, faith and family and friends. I mean, that would, you know, track and field, you know, kind of falls in there and, you know, just a corny, you know, uh, saying of you know one track mind you know so like but like you know it's it, it's it's uh it's definitely different and if it was and you're, you're right if it was if it was precedent i don't know i don't know if that would be in a lot of ways i think it would be great and in some ways who knows it might not be so great probably drive some of us crazy to be you're probably, <laughs> frank probably, you're probably right all right before we move on you know we love shout outs you keep saying keith and you and i know keith uh, and then you also mentioned your uh, your friend who's a high school track coach. Give those two shouts out. They deserve it. I want to hear. Everybody wants to hear who they are. Yeah. So Matt Black, you know, he's uh, he's now he's he's just recently at Elkmont High School, but um, in Alabama, North Alabama. And um, where, where was he at job. before? So he was at Brooks High School um, as an assistant. He's been um, at Opelika High School, Scottsboro. Um, um, so he's been in you know part of some really good programs. Um, several state championships and you know yeah, different, I, I know levels. I know him I, I you've I, probably I, seen him or met him or something yeah like that, that. that name sounds super familiar and, then, you know, and of course you know and of course Keith Hurston I mean he you know he and I obviously you know he's he's the assistant and he's the jumps multis coach at Texas Tech now and um, you know and you know Keith and I have been doing this thing for a long time and, and even though he's in Texas and I'm in Alabama I see him more than I see anybody from high school throughout a year because you know our parents still live a mile apart um Oh. You know, we, you know, we grew up, we, you know, we sent, we're third cousins. We, we grew up, um, you know, um, a mile apart from each other. Parents grew up together and, and then, you know, you know, hanging out and stuff. So, um, and then we've, you know, we lived together five years of college and, um, you know, at the junior college level and at Bell State Community College in Hamilton, and then also um, in Tuscaloosa. So, 
um, when we was, you know, at Alabama together. So, um, you know, we've, we've definitely been a lot of places and seen a lot of things because of track and field. And um, we have a lot of the same people to thank along the way. And um, so, and including each other, I believe. And, you know, I think he would say the same thing about me. So, um, but we get to, we get to bounce each other's, you know, ideas off each other at Christmas or Thanksgiving or whenever, you know, a lot of times too. So, um, you know, so it's been, uh, it's been a journey that I don't think, I don't, in a lot of ways, I don't think here I, either one would have expected it to be. Um, um, but, you know, we, um, we didn't really, in the beginning, didn't really set out for anything in particular, um, you know, uh, but, um, but somewhere along the lines, I, I remember, I do remember being in, um, I think we were at Bevel State when, you know, at, at some point, or, or maybe, maybe that was when I was at Troy and he was at Auburn, um, and we were kind of in our, our GA intern, you know, ship type um, things at the time, but, you know, was, we kind of decided I wanted to go small college head coach route, you know, and he wanted to try try for the big the big time and, and the power five and see what, um, you know, at that time it wouldn't refer to as power five, but um, but kind of wanted to see what it was about and, 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 and sort of see if he could uh, see if he could do it. And there's no doubt that he has. So, um, you know, so it's been it's been awesome for both of us. We, we we've been blessed for sure. Well, and I'm allowed to poke fun. First of all, I know you're listening right now, Keith. Uh, you know, Chad beat you. He, he's on the podcast before you. I know that's going to cause some rifts uh, on Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it at convention. You know, it's just the way that the cards fell, my friend. Uh, but no, love Keith to death. Uh, you know, obviously consider him a, a great friend as well. And just uh, uh, obviously, you know, it goes without saying what kind of coach he is. <laughs> I mean, he's, yeah. he's you know, yeah. he, he's got, uh, you know, I, I didn't, his best long jumper male my best male long jumpers, probably two of them added together wouldn't have been that PR. So it's just how, how good he is. Uh, okay. So where did you set out? So let's talk about how, what was your first foray into coaching? What was the first, was it the GA at Auburn? Where, where do we, where do we start? Well, so, well, Keith was at Auburn. I was at Troy, oh, That's right. Um, yeah. but, um, so I, but I originally, um, I actually stayed, um, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to acquire my associate's degree at Bevel State. I was just going to transfer straight to um, Alabama with whatever credits I had. Um, I ended up um, staying back um, a semester or two um, to finish my associate's degree. And so in that time, I just sort of um, went from almost like a student assistant with Jason Marshall to, to being an assistant, you know, unpaid assistant, but mm-hmm. I was finishing my degree and, and my, you know, finishing my associate's degree. So I was helping, helping him for a little while. And, um, you know, during that time, I believe that was, think that was JJ's overlap I think JJ Downs would, would have been there during that time um uh because I know it was Jazeel's second year and then and then I moved on to the University of Alabama but um but even while I was in Alabama for um, for a couple of years I was still kind of helping you know when I could I was helping you know coach Marshall um from time to time you know kind of from the distance you know hour and 15 minutes away um so um and and was actually looking at one time I was I was looking to walk on to the um to the track team in Alabama, but I'd really went a while without Keith did. We, we actually, um, um, he and I both were going to, and at the time, um, coach Tiffin, Rod Tiffin was the, was the assistant. He was the jumps coach there. And so we had discussed me coming out to high jump, Keith coming out to long jump and, you know, walking on or whatever, there wasn't a whole lot of depth in those areas at the time. And so, um, but I needed one class credit to, to be eligible to compete in the spring. And so, um, in indoor and outdoor season. So I, um, which I, I had come December, but at the time I, I didn't want to take out any more student loans than I had to, um, uh, you know, to pay for school. Um, I was working, I was going class 15 to 18 hours um, a semester um, and working at Home Depot 35 to 40 hours a week. Wow. Um, but at that, what was kind of cool is, is during that time, uh, Miguel Pate was still training professionally. And so Keith and Miguel were training together. Um, and so, uh, because I can remember like, and, and then, so they were training together and Miguel and I were working together at Home Depot. And so, um, because at the time the Olympic committee had some type of deal with, uh, that's with right. The, and so they could, which, cause I used to, I used to get on to Miguel about it. I was like, man, you know, you, I'm working nearly 40 hours a week. You work 20 and make what make, make the money for 40. So that, that's how the, that's what the deal was. He they, they could work half the time and make double the pay. So, um, I was like, what, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, I'm, 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 I'll forgive you for that. So, um, but, you know, so, but those two were, you know, kind of training together and, um, but, you know, from, from there, it was, uh, you know, after, after Alabama, I think uh, I actually had a little bit of a, um, because during that college time and, and even in between time, some I've worked a whole, a lot of retail 
um, you know, even in some management positions and stuff. So, um, but so kind of in between, I, I was I was doing that between uh, graduating from the University of Alabama with my bachelor's degree, um, and then um, I ended up taking the GA spot for uh, for a year with Coach Lancaster at, at Troy. Um, so I was down there with um, so it was me and um, like so so oddly enough, I go to I go to Troy and um, Diego leaves Troy and goes to Auburn. Um, you know, so Diego, Diego Flagger. So that's where I that I come in to know him. You know, I was about to say we got to make sure you say last names too, because you and I know these people. By the way, shout out to Diego because I know he's listening right now as well. New assistant coach New for Sprints job. at Ohio State. He's a Buckeye now. What, what what a life he lives. He goes from Miami to Columbus, Ohio. I mean, some yep. some of us live a little bit more charmed life than the others. <laughs> so shout out to Diego, man. Really proud of and happy for you. Uh, and know how all that came down. It was uh, it was amazing. By the way, uh, alum Diego has been on the podcast as well. Yep. So uh, love that. So you're at Troy now. I haven't mentioned this in a while, and it's it's kind of sad. Troy is the greatest university in the world. It's my alma mater, everybody. It's where I went to school. My firstborn's name is Troy. That's how important that school is. And, you know, really I should be with this podcast, I should be on the hunt to interview every coach who's ever been at Troy. Cause first of all, that alone would be 173 plus episodes. There's been amazing coaches that have come through Troy, including Jill Lancaster, former head coach at Oklahoma. And now she's at, I'm going to get all the, the directions mixed up Northeast Oklahoma. Northwest. I think, it, I think it's Northwest. I think Northwest. Northwest. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't, couldn't remember which one Northwest Oklahoma uh, university and doing a, a great job there. What a legend. I mean, you know, Drake relays hall of fame. I mean, just a, a, a yep. true, true legend. So, you know, the world wants to know Chad, I mean, just how great was it at Troy university? I mean, it's kind of heaven on earth, right? Well, it was a great school. And, you know, so we, back in, in high school, we, our state championships were always at Troy. And when, that's when, right. Mine too. Yeah. You know, still in yeah. the stadium before that, you know, moved out, you know, by the golf the, course. The, so, the old green, I don't even know what kind of surface <laughs> it was not a bind in Armando. It was, <laughs> it was hard. Compact. <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah. you know, so our state championships, you know, were, were there. And, and, and so, in, but in, in that time from my senior year of high school to, to from 2002 to 2009, when I landed there, you know, um, the campus, the town had grown, just crazy I mean how, how much it had grown in, in that length of time so um so you know I got down there we um and it was me and you know Tommy Barksdale you know so uh, you know Barksdale you know and me and him talk every day um you know now so you know he and I uh, I was at while well, I was at Bevel helping out he was helping out at Wallace State Community College with Stan Naruski and so um <laughs> you know so like you know and and then he and I end up you know at Troy together um Diego had been there the year before moves moves on to and him and him and actually so when Diego left Troy him and Keith became roommates at Auburn um, because Keith went from the intern spot to um, um, I get my years mixed up but he went from the intern spot to a GA spot in the kinesiology department and was you know still assisting with track and field and so Diego was doing that as well and um, you know so they were they were roommates so then, and then Tommy and I were at, at Troy together so so the connections are, are just crazy. And then, and at that time, you know, Trip, Chip Brundage was there and Pavel and, um, um, and then, and like you said, Coach Lancaster, Coach Lambert was still involved as well. Um, you know, Bob Lambert was still very involved with the program at, at that time. And, um, you know, great, you know, great guy to be around, you know, as well. And, you know, and, and, you know, and like you said, you know, Coach Lancaster is so, so knowledgeable, on, you know, in the weight room and, you know, she eats, sleep and breathes track and field and, and, and still does, I'm sure. But, you know, she, uh, you know, from, from five 30 in the morning to whatever time at night. And then on Sunday afternoons after church. So it was just like, you know, she was in the <laughs> office all the time. And so, um, you know, she, she was very, it was awesome. You know, she, it was, it was funny cause she was really frugal, you know, about things like she would, she would make sure the athletes had what they needed as far as, you know, gear goes and, you know, the day disorder and all that kind of stuff. But she would stop in at Walmart and buy a $2 sweatshirt and then go get you know, go get a screen print of Troy and a wing foot on it. And that's kind of what she did, just did. You know, that's what she, that's how she did her thing, you know. And, I, and like, so, um, you know, I thought that was pretty cool, though. And she would, you know, how she would go about some of that stuff. And um, but, you know, she was she grew up on a farm and we had a lot of similarities and a lot of the things that we did um, you know, that I, I did and keep did growing up. And. Um, so she and I would have, you know, jokes and stuff about different things. So it was, it was fun. We had, we, we really did. She, um, and I know she's doing well and um, I, I actually need to reach out and check on her. So um, at some point, but uh, soon it's been a while since I ran into her, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, 
it's unbelievable the the connections and and kind of you know how 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 a lot of that kind of goes by and then you know once you connect with these folks it it sticks with you and you know you don't you don't forget the things uh, that you learned and the people you met along the way at this point are you fully into like this is going to to be my career because you know you talked about the time at home depot and yet other retail including management experience i mean you could have easily i could be interviewing the newest ceo of lowe's right now you know you you know uh at this point as you're working through your ga uh position at troy are you like okay yeah i'm i'm going to be a track coach this is the the path for me yeah i you know in in a lot of ways i think i i, th- I thought that was the case and, and but then um, you know, originally, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll back up just a little. So at, at Bevel State, when, before I actually went to, um, the University of Alabama and, and, you know, Keith and I, and, um, we actually ended up, um, rooming for the most part, those two years with, with also, with also with other people that we grew up with, um, they ended up at Alabama after they had spent time at Northwest Shoals Community College and, in Florence. And, and then they ended up in Tuscaloosa and we all ended up back together, having grown up together since we were five, um, <laughs> Excuse me. But um, so at one point, um, I actually toured the uh, meteorology department at the University of South Alabama um, because I wanted to be a meteorologist and I was wanting to get my bachelor's degree at, in, at USA and then move on to UAH to get my atmospheric science degree. Um, and I remember like I don't remember why mom didn't get to go. I think she just couldn't get off work or something. But I remember that uh, my dad and I and Keith ended up touring South Alabama because we were also talking to the coach at the time, that was before Coach Bruschi got there, um, you know, see if we could either at least walk on maybe to the track team, you know, our, um, in our freshman year. And so, um, so we go down, we go down and, and tour the, and tour the department. And I remember, uh, um, Keith, I remember even Keith saying, like, man, I, I think I want to go into meteorology now after seeing this, you know, just kidding. But like, he was like, but it was because we had toured the, you know, the department and, and things. And it was, you know, he was kind of with us. And then we sort of went through the stuff that he wanted to look at too. So, um, but, um, but I had, I remember the department head that had toured us around, uh, he was like, he said, yeah, you know, when you, once you're, um, once you get your degree in, in meteorology, you'll be one math credit away from, um, having a math degree. And I was like, mm, that's too much math. And, that yeah. much. and so at that point that, that sort of dropped <laughs> off and I decided, okay, weather's going to definitely be a hobby. All I really wanted to do was chase tornadoes and hurricanes, you know, I, you know, so, I'm out. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? That's a lesson right there in recruiting and also something that as we learn and as a sales professionals as well is it's called don't answer unasked questions. Mm-hmm. So uh, sometimes you can, and, and I've been guilty of this early in my career. Maybe you have experience with this in recruiting. You can talk yourself out of a recruit. Like you, you, the recruit's coming and then you say, you keep talking and it's like uh, you just spoiled it, right? So that that professor was saying that as a bone, like he thought that was an extra, like, Hey man, you'll only be one class away from a mat. Like you can get two degrees. And mm-hmm. instead it was like, Oh, wait a minute. I was coming here until you said that. Cause uh, that means there's a lot of math and that ain't this guy. I don't want to be that. Right. That's well, really interesting. That's true. And like, you know, and, and at the time it was just, you know, cause it was like all the way through Cal three and differential equations and all this different stuff. And I'm thinking, well, all I want to do is re- be able to know how to read these radars that are all, all around this you know, octagon <laughs> shaped room. And, and, you know, and, and hunker down in here under the basketball arena during hurricanes and the, when they're in the Gulf and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, go out to Oklahoma and chase a few tornadoes or whatever. So, you know, they, I, you know, but I, I was like, eh, you know, but obviously, you know, I, coaching was, you know, was, was, was a love at that point too. And, you know, and, and so as it kind of moved through, um, you know, I think that, you know, at my time at Troy and, and some different areas there, I did, I did want to, um, you know, coaching, I, I felt like that was where it was at, and it, but I was still sort of filling it out, um, you know, and it, it took even some time, you know, after that, I, I believe, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of coaches, I know several that have, have been in the same boat. Sometimes it was, this is not paying what I needed to pay. Can I do this very much longer as I'm getting older and needing, you know, needing to make X amount of money to, you know, for family or whatever. So, um, you know, so that was kind of the, the part that, you know, eventually, and we can get into it a little later, probably. But um, you know, I I did steer away from coaching for a little bit and got you know went into retail management. So, um, but uh, found my way back. 
So, sometimes we get lost and find exactly where we were supposed to be. That's right. So let's continue because we talked about we're a GA at Troy so far here in our journey. Uh, we know if you're doing it right, that's at most usually a two-year uh, appointment. Uh, I, I didn't go to grad school, but it would have taken me at least three to four. It would have been like a whole another undergrad for me. Uh, what what was next? So what you, you get the, the graduate degree and you decide to do... Well, so actually, I didn't finish the graduate degree at the time, so okay. I was I was there for a year. Um, I took I took several classes to get my um, degree to line up. So I had some undergrad classes still to go to mix with the grad um, uh, the grad classes at the time. Um, after so I leave I leave there um, after a year. Um, just had a lot of things going on, sort of medically at the time. Um, had you know a lot of things. I don't, uh, some Crohn's and things that was bothering me at the time. So um, so I ended up back in Florence for a little while and. Um, was able to get a job as a uh, as a supervisor in, at Dick's Sporting Goods, and um, so I worked for several several months there. Um, and then um, um, I had planned on working my way up. I was actually told by by the manager that you know when I hired on that you know, hey with the you know since you have a bachelor's degree and, and, and retail experience you can move through really quick if you wanted to and you know and and right on up. And so that was sort of where I stood. And but I about a month into that, I told her, I said, the only way I leave here anytime soon, as I said, is if for some reason, Jason Marshall leaves Bevel State Community College and I can step in because I kind of knew that he was thinking about stepping away. Um, so I said, that would be the only way if I could, if I could get that job. Mm -hmm. Well, in July, almost in July, he, he waited till nearly August and, and was like, Hey, FYI, I'm about to put the papers on the desk, you know, the two week notice, get your stuff ready. Let's see if we can line this thing up. So, so I, I started making, you know, moves to try to get, you know, to get that position. And um, so he let me know. And, you know, and, and when he did break away, then I, you know, kind of swooped in as fast as I could. And, you know, you know how it works. I mean, if you, if you see it posted online, you're two weeks behind and, you know, kind of thing. So luckily I knew about it before anybody else did. And um, so, you know, long story short, I was able to go at, at that point, then I'd left Troy in May and, um, worked basically just a summer at, at Dick's Sporting Goods at, as a supervisor. And then, and then I was, you know, I, I was head coach at 26 uh, years old at, at, at back at Bevel. And that was the goal that, that was at the time, that's what I wanted. I wanted to return to, I wanted to return to Bevel State. I, you know, I had a heartfelt connection to the school, um, the faculty, the staff, and, and, you know, um, the people there, the AD at the time, you know, uh, was, was phenomenal and stuff. So uh, Russell Houghton. And so, you know, it was, it was good. Um, uh, it was a good fit for me. I knew that I, I would feel comfortable there. That's what I wanted to do. I knew all of the um, hats that I would wear there, um, um, but I still, um, but I still wanted it. You know, I still wanted to do that, and um, and boy, did I wear some hats, which I, I knew I would because you know I knew what Jason was doing whenever he was there. So, you know, but you know he. Uh, so I mean, I was you know a student service assistant. So twenty, well, half my week was supposed to be in student services. So admissions and financial aid and. You know, so basically I put 20 hours in there and then an additional 40 to the coach because obviously you can't do that in 20. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was intramural sports coordinator. So I was I had flag football. I was refereeing two evenings a week. And so I'd have my girls, my distance runners um, running their um, mileage around the campus on those days just so I could at least scream at them when they came by. And, you know, so and then I was on all kinds of committees because I was only on, the only sport on campus. So I was on every committee with the dean and and stuff. So um uh, and, and, the, and the, you know, like executive faculty or whatever. So, um, but, um, so it definitely, you know, it definitely kept me, definitely kept me busy and, um, but I loved it. And we, you know, it was, it was great. We had some, we had some good, uh, you know, I recruited real strong that first year and, um, and everything was going really well and, until, you know, proration hit a little bit in the state and, uh, and the governor, um, you know, through, I think three, 3% or 4% cut in education at the time. And so, um, you know, and then, uh, and then that was, that was, that was it. That was, that was, time to cut you know we we talked about being blissfully ignorant blissfully unaware you know looking back now hearing all the things that you were doing at bevel and by the way it's not just bevel that, that's a common occurrence uh sadly uh but you were you know recruiting coaching that alone full-time job being the head coach at 26 years old all that again we talked about all the things budgeting scheduling etc that you have to do uh with that uh position but your um intramural coordinator you're refing football games two nights a week did you ever accidentally as the girls were running by throw a flag at them get, get your sports <laughs> get your sports mixed up <laughs> I, mean, I, pro I probably should have sometimes they if they weren't running like they needed to you know they, I, might, I might should have flagged them but um but, but with, yeah you know it, it was it was a lot to juggle but 
but it was also something I was willing to do just because yeah, that, that's what I was getting at. Did you, you know, being blissfully unaware as you were doing that as a 26 year old, was it like you were just having the time of your life? Cause you, I mean, you, you know, refereeing football is not the worst job in the world. And obviously coaching track is not the worst job in the world where you kind of blissfully unaware. You're just like, man, I know I'm working probably 80 hours a week, but man, I'm having fun. I'm outside. I get to do things and be active where you kind of just, or, or was there any little creep of like, man, I would like to just be coaching track and I'd like to be making more money doing that. Uh, where, where, where were you at headspace wise? I think it was probably a little bit of a, a mix, but like you said, you know, blissfully unaware is a, is a really good way of putting it. I think you, you know, you sort of understand, but you know, at, you know, but at the same time, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, you kind of, um, when you, uh, when you're around, when you're around good people, like we talked about earlier, you're around good people every day and you get to, you know, you get to go to work and even though, you know, you're, you're busy and you, you know, all the time and you got things going on, um, you're, you, you're kind of, you know, for the most part, you're doing something you enjoy and you're getting to be around the athletes and build those relationships and that kind of thing. So, so you do get kind of lost in, in a lot of what you're, what you're doing now, you know, when, you know, part of the time when, uh, when you're going to pay bills and you're realizing that, you know, things are a little tight, you might, <laughs> you might be, you know, rethinking some things. So, you know, I think it was, I think it was always, um, you know, um, something that entered your mind, you know, from time to time, like, okay, is this, you know, is this, is this worth it? You know, and, uh, you know, or is it going to, you know, and just seeing if there was ever going to be like a, an, an increase, you know, and, you know, and, you know, okay, well, I'm doing this, or is it going to, is it going to reap rewards, you know, later on and stuff. So, you know, but, but you tried not to think, think about that in, in the moment you tried to, you know, kind of be where your feet are, you know, so to speak. And so, yeah. um, you know, and as, as much as, as much as, as you could, and, you know, that was, that was the, um, one of the only moves that I guess I've made in my career that I didn't, that I didn't choose was when, was when the programs were cut at Bevel, you know, so, um, you know, I, everything else has been on my own time for the most part. So, um, uh, it's, uh, so, and that's hard. That makes it, that makes it difficult when, when somebody else is dictating, <laughs> you know, in, in, in the side of your control. So that's a great point about, you know, I asked about being blissfully unaware. Well, if you're always searching, so during that time at Bevel, if you always had your eye, you know, over here, a thousand miles away of like, well, maybe I should try to go there. You don't maybe get to do as good a job as you can and should be doing right where you are, where your feet are. That's, that's a really, and I think that's a really important, I don't want to call it a lesson, but a really important kind of thought process, uh, not only for coaches, but for, you know, parents, people just in general, uh, you know, where your feet are being intentional, uh, exactly where you are, uh, and whether you are pursue other activities or, sometimes activities are uh, pursued on you, uh, you know, that, then, then you change your, your mind frame and then become, become there. So uh, the program's cut at Bevel, which, uh, you know, anytime we, we cut track and field programs, I don't know, but I won't speak on other programs, but track and field so fundamental to what we do in society uh, and other sports and character building. It's always a mistake when we're cutting programs. So they make the mistake at cutting Bevel. You're now thrown into a flummox. What, what do you do? Well, you know, so my, so it was, it was kind of wild and, and, you know, the, the, uh, the program's getting cut or it getting announced that they were to us as coaches that they were getting cut that day was, um, was uh, that particular day wasn't even the worst thing that happened to me. Um, my, um, my papa had passed away that morning at, um, at about eight or nine o'clock in the morning. I'd got the phone call. I'd just been at home the night before and drove home late to Hamilton. So, um, so thinking that, because that week was going to be our was our spring break so I had actually um the thought was like well you know he, he seemed to be okay or a little bit better at the time so we thought he would be around for most of the week and so I went home I went back to Hamilton that night everybody kind of dispersed and then the next morning I was headed out about nine o'clock um because I got home late and you know whatever so I was headed to campus um because I decided I told my family I was like well I'm gonna work half of the week because faculty was off for spring break staff was not so you know unless we took off so I was trying to work half the week at least I said I'll work to Wednesday or and then I'll just come home for the rest of the week um so my cousin called that morning and and told me and I, and I knew what was I knew what it was before I answered mm -hmm. the phone so um so I just I was actually headed out the driveway so I just turned back and um and and picked uh got my got my dog out of the house put him in the vehicle and um and we um and, and we started back, back back home. So I had, um, you know, we live out in the country in North Alabama and, you know, so we were at my grandparents' house and um, and sometime that afternoon I, I had, um, or midday, I'd walked outside in the, um, in the yard and um, got, at some point got just enough service that, you know, that a voicemail came through and I, and I listened to it and it was my athletic director and he, and, and all he was really saying was, hey, you know, we're going to have a kind of impromptu meeting at two o'clock on the Jasper campus, you know, 
you know, if you could be there, whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, that's not, mm-hmm. don't do that. Like, that's not something we do. And so, um, um, so I had a bad gut feeling, you know, it had already been a horrible day. So, um, so, but I, you know, I got, I, I don't know if I got my grandparents' house phone or, or, or was able to get enough service to call, but I, um, but I called Russell and he was, and, and he was like, Hey, you know, you know, meeting, whatever, can you make it? And I said, well, here's the deal. I said, I ran, I ran home today and I told him why he said, Oh, well, you're good. You know, don't, you know, take care of family, do what you got to do. This is fine. I said, wait a minute. I said, what's this about? And, and he said, well, and, and I said, look, I said, are we done? I said, just, I said, wow. just, I said, just tell me. And he said, yeah, he said, he said, we are, he said, that, you know, everything's getting cut. And I said, well, listen, I said, I didn't bring anything with me. I'll have to have clothes for the rest of the week. I got to go back to Hamilton anyway, tonight at some point and then come back. So I said, let me just, I'll just leave in a little bit, come to the meeting and then, and then go from there. So, so I drove, you know, you know, a little bit later, I, I drove on down to Jasper for the meeting. And, um, you know, so we, um, so we, you know, we, we, you know, had the, you know, had the discussion with the, with the VP or, or you know, assistant uh, associate dean or whatever, the vice president. So, um, and it was me, my, well, the baseball coach and, and a couple of other coaches were on vacation and one, or one had had, I think, dental surgery or something. And, and then and another was on vacation. So um, softball and basketball. So we, uh, myself and the baseball coach is the only ones in the room with, with the AD. And so, um, but, you know, it was definitely uh, not ideal, but the, but the, but the big thing was for me was it was Monday of spring break. So it was the, um, um, you know, and we can get, we can dive deeper late, maybe later, but like, you know, it's unbelievable how things come full circle on, on things because um, they, the, the, the programs at Bevel, uh, our track and field program in cross country in particular was, was an, it was March 14th on a, on a Monday, spring break, when the programs were cut, announced cut. Well, when we added track and field here at, at MMI, um, it was March 14th, Monday of spring break, exactly 11 years to the day later so um and so tra- juco track and field ended with me and then 11 years later it started back with me in the state of alabama so you know it was definitely um I, when i was able to kind of put that together and how i was able to know for sure that that was that i had my date straight was i asked my mom i said what was the date that Papa passed away and he was and she was like march 14th i said on a, on a, on a, mm. I knew it. I said, I, I knew I had that straight. I said, that's unbelievable. And so, you know, it took me some, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that whole thing. Cause a lot of things obviously has changed in my life in 11 years. So, um, it'd been a lot of places, met a lot of people and, um, and had a lot of athletes and, you know, at different levels and stuff. So, um, it's, it's weird how things come full circle, but, um, that's, that's a lot said to, to say that the, the next step once the programs were cut was just, I, I, I was, I, I was so concerned about my athletes. I was concerned about my, my girls. Um, I had a really good group of girls that, you know, several that had just been all Americans at indoor nationals, um, um, the week, the week before, um, actually. So we were, you know, we were about to hit the outdoor, we were starting outdoor season once they got back from spring break. So, um, so I, so what I did was I, um, um, I, I hoped that I could get through the week without them knowing that the programs was cut. But by Wednesday, um, um, uh, which I was preparing for a funeral that day, but, but I, I was getting phone calls from my team manager, athletes, hey, we're hearing this, is this true? And, and I was so frustrated. I was just really aggravated that they were finding out. But, you know, some, some people had got wind and then the news got a hold of it and, and stuff. So, you know, because baseball and softball were playing games during the, during the spring break, and so their teams were, they told their teams during, during that time, you know, within a, few, within a day or two. So um, I wasn't able to keep it from them, but I, you know, I was like, look, I've got a plan. When you get back on Monday, we're sitting down, we're going to talk, we're going to talk everything. So in the meantime, um, later that week, I think it was maybe Thursday or Friday, um, I sent one email to Dee Brown at Iowa Central uh, Community College and, um, and, and said, hey, can you, uh, can you forward this out to, um, to all the coaches, and, and I said, I'm going to put together an email, you know, about our program getting cut. I said, and anybody who's interested in any of my girls, you know, please just make me aware, let me know, and, and I will make sure that they, you know, that they know what options they have. So, um, so D was able to do that, and literally five minutes, I mean, within five minutes, I had emails coming in from from Central Arizona Community College, Vincennes, and, um, you know, Chattahoochee Tech at the time, and um, uh, which he and I had already talked about some, some, girl, some of my girls, but um, because they had traveled with us, you know, some to, to nationals and, and stuff, but um, um, sharing a bus or whatever. So, um, but, um, 
you know, so within, I mean, it was like, hey, I want to talk to your thrower. Some of them was able to name, name them by name. I want to talk to Derice or I want to talk to your triple jumper or your hurdler. And so they, um, so I just, I just put together a list and, and had, you know, you know, all the girls was like, okay, look, you know, here's who's, who's here, who wanting to talk to you. You know, I entertain every, anybody you want to, if you're not wanting to go far from home or if you're not wanting to, which they were from all over anyway. So um, I said, but anything I can help with, we'll, you know, we'll help you get through. And so that was where the, that was where the focus turned from, from March, you know, through the remainder of the, you know, to the season and we kind of went from there. You, you know, Chad, simplistically life is kind of in three buckets. Uh, there's our work life, there's our personal life, and then there's our spiritual life. When we have something catastrophic happen in one of those buckets, it's a big deal. Um, you know, we recently had Jim Sprecher uh, from University of Lynchburg on the podcast. He was at Ball State when they dropped the program. You know, he, he had to hear about it on the radio. That's how he learned about it. And he was, uh, he was an alum. That was his alma mater as well. It, it's just, it's gut-wrenching. I mean, it's, it, it makes you start questioning things, right? Like, am I in the right profession? Is this really what I want to be in? Uh, in our personal life, when we have someone that passes away, someone close to us, we, were, we talked about the tight-knitness of your family. You had both of these things. So in two of our three buckets, you had both of these really, like I said, no hyperbole here, catastrophic events happen on the same day. I mean, I, I can't imagine the amount of pain, sorrow that you had to be, that you probably were going through at that point. Did the thoughts of quitting ever occur to you? And if they did, how do you, how did you get over that? And no one would have blamed you. If you'd have said, you know what, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to work in the local retail store and, you know, I'm gonna live a good life. It's, it's okay. That's a great life. That, that, that's not a, I'm not demeaning that at all. Uh, but to have at such a young age, you know, you're not even 30 at this point, a program cut, a father passes away. I, I mean, this is, this would be too much for a lot of people to handle did that ever the quitting ever come into your mind and if so how, how did you push on and pursue on yeah I think that you know you know with, with my when my grandfather passing away like that was sort of you know um obviously that sort of trumped the the other at the time and you know so it was sort of you know trying to process them as best I could differently you know a little bit a little bit differently um but you know I, I think that being able to sort of turn my attention to the athletes and focus mm -hmm there first um was was a big deal I mean you know the the people at, at Bevel State thought enough of me that they were you know they were looking to other places that I could potentially work on campus you know either on, on you know do something else you know that kind of thing find me another job if I wanted to remain there mm -hmm. um and but obviously I coaching is what I wanted to do at the time so I, you know I was looking to looking to find something and um you know and and it was just uh, you know trying to trying to fill it out. I, I don't, I don't really think there was really any, any, um, uh, thought of necessarily quitting. I, I did, you know, I, I, I guess I just sort of tried to sit back as best I could and, and process it as, you know, let it be a lesson and, and, and kind of, um, because there was some different things that, you know, along the way in, in that process where, you know, I just didn't feel like, um, you know, uh, the droppings of the program were done in the right way. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't really to slam anybody, I, <clears throat> but I was, you know, I was a little bit frustrated with, you know, with kind of how it went, kind of how it went down. And I, and I didn't feel like that. Um, so, so it was sort of in, in my eyes, it was, it was kind of a way to, um, you know, along, because, because along the way, along the journey, you know, you kind of, you, you have, you have lessons, you, you figure out the things that, um, that you want to take with you and, and do later um, and, and say, okay, I'm going to use that. Um, and then you also have the things where, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be that person or I'm not going to, you know, that's something I don't want to, I don't want to um, have attached to my name or, or my reputation. So, you know, I, I just believe there's a, there's a right way to treat people. And so um, and a right way, right way and wrong way to do business. And I know, I mean, I know you know all about that and, and the success you've had with Gil and, and other things in your life. And so, you know, and I, I just, you know, to me that, um, you know, when they, when they call it, like, for instance, with the coding of the program, when they called us in to talk to us, the president wasn't in the meeting. Um, and that was her decision. And, you know, and then we're going to be asked what our thoughts were. Well, you didn't, you didn't, you know, why are we asking now? <laughs> right. Yeah. What's better like, now? Right. Too late now. And so like, I, you know, and so, you know, and, 
and I was like, look, I, you know, when I was given the opportunity to talk and I actually remember saying, you know, I, was, I said, well, well, technically it's a little late for that. I said, but I said, and also I said, I haven't been here um, long enough, you know, as in this capacity to, I don't, I don't feel like form an opinion. I said, but at the same time, I said, I've been affiliated with this school for nine years. I said, you know, as a student and, 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 you know, I got my degree here. I said, I, you know, I'm, I thank the world of the faculty and the staff. Um, it's been good to me. I said, I, you know, I've got friends here and I still, I, I'm, if, if, you know, the people that we met, uh, that Keith and I met while we were at Bevel State, I mean, they're lifetime friends. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, as close or closer to us in some ways than, you know, a lot of ways over the last 20 years to, and, you know, as, to, as to people we grew up with in high school. And we didn't think that was possible because we had a close knit group. I mean, it was, you know, we, it was, it was, it was phenomenal. So, um, but, you know, I don't, I don't think, I think it was more of a, just, you know, uh, kind of take the lesson and, and, and move on. Um, understand that all things happen for a reason and, and, and see what the, and, and see what the next move was. And, you know, fortunately, you know, some things were, you know, started kind of happening. I did, I, but now the, the thing I did do is I, I'd waited till um, I'd focused so much on, on finding all the, all of my girls places to go, all my women places to go that, um, you know, I, I think I looked up and it was like June, of, you know, some mid summer and I didn't have it come August. I didn't have anywhere to go, you know? So I, I was, I was like, I got to figure something out. And, and so, um, but along, but along the way, you know, we had, you know, uh, I had, I'd started applying for some things. And, and, um, uh, and so the next, the next step was, um, I actually interviewed for, uh, um, um, for the position at Georgia Southern, uh, assistant coach position. And, but coach Cox at, um, Kenneth, Kenneth Cox at uh, Birmingham Southern had called me the day before I was supposed to interview at Georgia Southern and said, you know, well, first he texted me and, and he and I had been kind of texting for a while because his, uh, even though we didn't really know each other really well, he I told him about the programs getting cut at the very next weekend when we were to meet at Jacksonville State um, together, and he was recruiting one of my girls, um, you know, to to come run for him the next year. So, um, and so I um, uh, he I remember I remember I didn't think about it a lot then, but I I, I thought back on it when he was texting me that day, and and I was like, well, where are you hint, hinting around at? Are you got a position opening up or what? Because he was he, he wasn't being real clear, but he was kind of asking me, Hey, how's it going? Are you, are you looking, are you finding anything, whatever? And so, um, and, and, but I could remember, uh, when I had told him that day that uh, him and some other coaches at our programs have been, you know, we're, we're getting cut. He, um, at JSU, he was like, um, he, he, he said, I, you know, it's like, you just punched me in the gut. He was devastated. I mean, it, he was genuinely, it, it genuinely hurt him that, you know, that somebody, you know, he knew or whatever was getting to know, um, was losing their program. So, you know, because I mean, the guy's got a heart of gold. So, um, I mean, obviously, you know, Kenneth, Kenneth Cox well. So, um, you know, and so he, you know, he, he, and so he and I started talking more and then that text message pops up that day. Well, I had to interview the next day for Georgia Southern. So I was driving down to stay the night and, and then, you know, it was going to be there for a day and a half. And so um, he was like, well, listen, um, well, actually, I'm trying to remember it. I think that actually happened over the weekend. I was actually visiting friends. We were in Chicago visiting friends and godchildren at the time. So um, when all that kind of lined up, but anyway, he was like, he said, well, when, when you, after you come back from Georgia Southern, can you come here on an interview the next day? And I was like, sure, you know, absolutely. So, um, so it kind of, it worked out. I, you know, I ended up at, um, uh, going to interview with him and um, he offered that day, Georgia Southern called me. She, she wanted to offer, but then she ended up in a situation to where, um, she was really frustrated. She was wanting to hire me, but then she had to open up the job again because the AD and the athletic director, or see the athletic director and the president at the time didn't want a male coach coaching female athletes and they only had women only. And so um, she was aggravated that she was going to have to open it back up, but didn't want me to you know, take a chance on missing the Birmingham Southern job. Pay was about right at the same. Um, Birmingham Southern was closer to home. And so, you know, Coach Cox and I had hit it off and stuff. So, um, so I ended up telling him yes and, um, you know, and, and landed um, at Birmingham Southern for a couple of years. You know, I'm so glad, you know, we were able to talk about Ken Cox because, you know, you, you kind of nailed it, the heart of gold. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are some amazing people in this profession uh, that you and I both know and had interactions with and consider friends. And Ken Cox, you, you know, I can, if you know Ken Cox, when Chad was telling that story about when he told at the Jacksonville State meet, that, you know, the program was being cut, like Ken was like genuinely hurt. 
Like I, I know that, like I, I, knowing him, I know that's exactly like it hurt him who had no affiliation with it. It's not going to hurt him. His, his life moves on with that. He was genuinely impacted by that because of his friendship with you and just his love of the sport. If you're, you're a track person, he just automatically loves on you. Oh, yeah. uh, he, he is an amazing person. How, how was your time at Burnham Southern? That's a really uh, gorgeous campus, a gorgeous track and field complex, kind of, you know, down and a bunch of woods in the back and your throws area over here on your right. I just love the, uh, the setup that Birmingham Southern has there. It was, uh, it was, it was phenomenal. You know, I, I came in at a time when, um, uh, you know, coach, uh, Mary Birdwell had, um, her, her, her husband had passed away, um, not too long before that. And so that same summer, um, he had, he had contacted Coach Cox, you know, Kenneth had contacted um, uh, Coach Bird and asked her if, he, you know, he, he was going, trying to help occupy her time more or less and, you know, keep her, you know, keep her around in the sport of track and field and around young people. And, and so um, she, you know, he, he had asked her to come on to help, you know, coach, the, you know, to coach the distance uh, and, and the cross country um, runners. So uh, in the fall, so like he, uh, so she was coming on. Well, I had had some of her former athletes at, at Hoover, when she was at Hoover High School, I had I had had some of her kids at Bevel State, you know, uh, you know, as athletes. Um, so we, you know, I knew of Coach Bird. I'd met her, you know, but I didn't know her. Legend. So, oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> um, I stories like crazy, and like you know, just she. So I like I wouldn't take a million dollars for those two years at BSC, um, you know, and well, well, anything in my career, honestly, like I don't regret not one day of it. But um, anywhere I've been, but you know. So Coach Bird and I get there at the same time in the fall, and you know even even up until the day she passed away, like she she would talk about um, um, that one that one year at Birmingham Southern. Like every time I I mean I would see her, we'd sit down at a, at an indoor meet or or an outdoor meet wow. at Montevallo or wherever. She would bring up that group of kids, and and there was a lot of reason and a lot of reasons for that. But one one thing was is we had. You know, we already had you know several athletes on the team, but we all um, obviously, but we had we had several multi-sport athletes that had came out, and so we had we had a group of like five guys that had came out from football that had competed four years of football at Birmingham Southern, and then just wanted to keep competing. So they came out, you know, they're about to graduate in May, and they they came out and um, and uh, uh, competed for us. We had um, we had a girl uh, or two that was. Um, basketball in the fall and all conference that would end and it was all conference in, in track and field every year and as well in the spring and then and then um, um so uh and then Shelby Moore was also you know she so she was volleyball in the fall all conference and and, and then same way with track and you know we uh, you know coach turned the jumps and then coach Bird also helped me help me with the jumpers as well so because she knows every you know she knew everything she knew everything about everything you know she <laughs> she you know she trained the officials in the state of Alabama and all yep. over the country and US, you know, USATF. And so, um, especially in the high school ranks and it's now Alabama hall of fame and, and everything, you know, sports hall of fame. So, but, um, but she would talk about those kids all the time. And so, and, and it was because they, they bought in like, and, and it was, you know, I thought back, like I, like when she, when she passed away back, I think, you know, last year, you know, a year and a half ago, I, um, had a tough time with that, you know? So, um, for, for a while I still do and and I and I, I told somebody just recently I, I'd give anything this spring to pull up a stool or a cinder block or something beside her and just and just listen to her talk and because when she and I like when we'd get to talk I knew like if she was calling me um I, I had to make sure I, like okay if I if I was busy I couldn't answer it right then I thought I got I got to call coach back in a few minutes because we we're going to be on the phone for a while like you know it was not going to be just a quick conversation it was going to be you know we were going to be talking about you know, track and field and then it might spin to the Braves or whatever <laughs> she was a huge Atlanta Braves fan and, and, and stuff so she would travel the whole country even in her 70s um you know to Junior Olympics all the way to California and Oregon and mm. places and you know and I, I, would, I would get on her about you know being careful but um she's like oh you know I'll if, if the Braves are playing I'll have them on the radio if they're not I'll have my Elvis on and I'll be I'll be I'll be cruising down the road so you know she um but um but you know, she she it was unbelievable to watch her around those around those uh, kids that year, and and um, and and Kenneth would be would be able to tell you the exact you know what it meant to him too, and 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 so it was just it was unbelievable because those guys like I remember Darius and and and, and Will and and Aaron those those football guys that came out. I mean, you're talking linebackers that you know 
four times her size. She's, you know, she's not even five foot tall and, you know, in her seventies at the time. And, and it was so funny, like they, they never did track and field in their lives, never threw, never, you know, done anything. And she's out there trying to teach, you know, Darius how to throw the hammer. And I'm like, coach, you can't hold that 16 pound hammer. Like you give that to him, you figure something. And so, you know, eventually she finally picks up the broom, you know, the broom handle and she's trying to show the turn and stuff, but she's got it in her hand. I mean, she's fixing it. And so, but I remember the first day he picks it up, she's looking at him and she's like, she's like, what are you doing? Wait, 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 what are you doing? And he said, he said, well, coach, what are you, I said, I'm left-handed. She said, what? You're left-handed. She said, good, great. She said, all my life, as many years as I've been doing this, you know, at the time, 50 something years, she'd been coaching, you know, coaching. She said, I, um, she said, I've never had a left-handed thrower. She said, I don't, I'm having, I'm now everything's backwards for me. So I've got fear. So, but you know, I think if I remember correctly, every one of those, every one of those guys scored in, uh, in, wow. uh, in, uh, in the conference meet. And so, um, and, but, but what was so awesome, I, I was thinking back when she passed away to, to those days that we would be out there and, you know, and, and it was, um, it was, it was amazing to watch those, those guys fall on, like, because when she talked, you listened. And so, mm-hmm. so they would, you know, they would fall on every word she said and, you know, and, and, and looking back on it, I think, you know, those guys at 21 years old, you know, football guys, linebackers, 280, 300 pound, you know, muscled up guys like they, you know, you, a lot of kids, you know, at that age would, wouldn't have listened to, a, you know, a little old 75 year old tell them how to throw a 16 pound ball on the wire that she can't hold, you know, well, you know, and like, but they did. And they, they would just, they would follow on every word she said, because they knew she knew what she was talking about and they yeah. knew that she had her, their, their best interest in mind. And so, um, you know, those, Man, they, it was it was un, unreal to to just be a part of that. You know, they they gelled together. It was you know we had you know we we just almost won the conference on the guys' side that year. Um, we were second by just a couple points, but um, but it was it was amazing. Like they you know the, the way they bought in and and Coach Bird had such a such an impact on my life. Like you know for the last whatever you know it's been now you know you know in the time that I've known her. So um, it's uh you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. We had, we had a lot of fun at Birmingham Southern. You mentioned earlier about the people that you surround yourself with (laughs) and you're in a time period where two of some of the greatest people in this sport, Mary Birdwell and Ken Cox are, you're all on staff together, man. It's, it's that I knew that had to be a special time because I knew of the special people during that. Let's take a, a small pivot here, Chad. So you're now in year kind of three, four, five ish, six ish of your coaching career. What are you doing? You were primarily a high jumper, uh, but we know coaching on a- almost any level. We like to say the high school and JUCO level, especially, but this happens on all levels. You're coaching everything at some point in time, or definitely other events that you weren't necessarily an athlete. What are you doing? for like your own coaching education? Are you doing any of the USATF level ones, level twos? Uh, are you uh, doing more of the uh, peer uh, conversations with other coaches? How are you kind of making yourself a better like X's and O's type of coach? So we, so I, I actually, I got my, I got my USATF level one um, in actually while I was at Bevel State as a student, I, I believe it was, it was either uh, it was on the back end of that. So I think Keith and I actually both went to um, Mountain Brook High School. And I think I w- I'm almost positive J.J. Downs had something to do. I want to say he had something to do with USATF. And you may, I don't know if it was you. Uh, I was your teacher. That's the only reason I asked, Chad, was so that you could tell the world that I was your track teacher. That's all I really care. <laughs> well, I was trying to remember. I was, I was thinking, you know what? I think you were, the, you know, you were the one of the ones that did the level yeah. one. And so, um, and so level one was at Mountain Brook that year. And then um, so then fast forward, it's, well, you know, 2011 when I'm at, um, um, Birmingham Southern, but before, but before that, while I was at Bevel as the head coach, I started, um, I, um, I slept on the floor at convention, uh, you know, Chip Brundage was still at Troy. So he and Diego actually, he and, or Diego and I stayed with, with Chip that year, um, while Diego was helping at Auburn. Um, I can't remember if Keith, it seems like Keith roommate ruined with somebody too, because we're all low men on the totem pole everywhere, you know, for, well, I was, I was, I know I was at Bevel at the time as head coach, but still I didn't have the money to be able to pay for convention, um, you know, and, and, or anything like that. So, so we were slipping on the floors and, and, and going and learning from the symposiums and, and starting to get to know people. Um, and then, so that, that winter, um, we go to, we're at, uh, I think Eastern Illinois for indoor nationals, um, junior college nationals. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
and we're at the coaches meeting the night before the first day of nationals and Todd Lehman, who was um, like, I think he was our president at the time, I think, or, or one of the people in NJCAA that was, you know, that was um, you know, helping get us through and stuff. So um, he walked up to me at, uh, at you know, in the, in the line to get food and was like, Hey, Chad, I need you to talk to the, to the group tonight. And I'm like, huh? You know, he's like, I need you to talk to the rest of the coaches. And I was like, well, why do you need me? Why do you need me to talk to the rest of the coaches? And what it was, was he wanted me to explain to them because I'd went the previous year to convention and he, you know, he said, look, he said, they, the NJCAA has got to figure out and, and got to learn the importance of why we need to be at convention and, and, and get to be a part of uh, the NJCAA or the NJCAA needs to be a part of the USTFCCCA. And so um, with the, when, you know, with the NCAA schools and, and everything. So, um, he said, so just, I just want you to tell them why you do it and, you know, what, you know, whatever. So, you know, so, okay, well, I, you know, so I, when he prompted me, I, I just told the group that, well, you know, I, I get a lot out of it. You know, I, I went one time, I'm going to continue to go if I, if I have to, you know, scrape, you know, scrape by to get to make it happen. I'm going to try to learn every which way I can and, um, you know, get, and get down there and be a part of that. I, you know, I got so much of it, at, you know, so much out of it the first time I, you know, you know, experienced it and stuff. So, um, and then in all that time, and then actually, um, you know, Don Cox sent the email a week or two ago. Uh, we are officially, finally, 100% part of the Coaches Association now in the NJCA. So we've been trying to get fully involved ever since then. And so, um, because then it was it was me and Todd and um, uh, Coach Phillip uh, Phillips from uh, Cowley, Kitchener, yeah, some of those guys from Cloud County. You know, you know, you know Harry would you know and would come. Um, D Brown, you know, Don Cox, some of those would come, but outside of that, nobody in the JUCO level would, was really at convention. So, you know, now we've grown and everybody, you know, there's a lot more starting to starting to show up and programs are starting to get more involved. But, um, but, you know, I, I saw the importance of convention and, and I think now I've been, uh, I want to say I've been, you know, 12 out of the last 14 years or something like that. So, um, you know, try to, I try to go and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not shy to be able to walk up and, and talk to anybody or at least jump in any conversation. And, and because I learned that very early on in going to convention that, you know, these, these guys and, and women that, that have been there and done that for the last 30, 40 years, hall of fame coaches, whatever, like they're willing to um, disperse that knowledge on the younger, younger generation. So I figured that out in my you know late twenties that, you know, we could do that. Well, what's your advice? So right now someone's listening and maybe they've been to convention, maybe they haven't. First of all, uh, shout out to, you know, Sam Seams and the whole USTF CCC organization. I agree with you. I'm so happy to hear that NJCAA is now officially a part of the USTF CCCA because, you know, it, it's, it's the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. This association is for you the track and cross country coach, regardless of level, um, NCAA. Yeah. Check, uh, NJCA. That's right. Check NAI check high school check. Uh, this is your coaches association. And it's one of the most important bodies that we have out there for the men and women who choose to be a track and field and a cross or a cross country coach, because it's what is going to, uh, hopefully help continue to elevate the profession, whether it's, uh, titles, pay, uh, the professional development, personal development, and of course, the development of the sport itself uh, on the collegiate side of things. So, you know, I'm a huge, uh, Gil is a, is a huge supporter of USTFCA. I personally uh, am just a huge supporter uh, of the USTFCCA and what the men and women of that organization are doing for you, the, the track coach. So you, you should be in that and having your voice heard. Now, having said that, sorry, where I was getting to, chat. So someone's listening right now, and maybe they're going to go to convention for the first time this December. It's in Denver. Can't wait December in Denver to see everybody. And they, you know, they want to talk to coach so-and-so, but man, that's, I, I don't know if I can do that. I'm, I'm, I'm low man on the total pole, like you, you put it earlier, right? And this coach has one X, Y, and Z or whatever attributes you want to say is successful i can't just go up to them and, and introduce myself and talk to them what's your advice to that young person right now that young coach to to do that How, what's your advice on, on that coming into convention or, or at any meet to be real frank as long as they're not coaching <laughs> right well i would i would say that you know um understand that they were once in your shoes now that, that you're the, the shoe that you're in now so in the position you're in 
and you're and you're a little nervous or whatever and, and about uh, picking the brain of some you know somebody who's um, who you think knows um, a whole lot more than you do and maybe you um, doesn't you don't think you deserve to be in their presence you know <laughs> at all or, or whatever so um, you know they've they've also been in that position at some point at some point in their life so um, you know getting in there you know I, I would say that you know if you're if, you know if you're an assistant coach or, or even if you're a head coach at a, at a, um, for the first time and um, and, and still, you know, young and, and kind of landed that job a little bit soon or something like um, the getting getting taking and going with the with the coaches that you already do know. So utilizing um, one another's uh, connections um, because the connections piece is, is such a big deal. And, and, you know, and I think we all we all kind of learn that, you know, you know, pretty early on for the most part. Um, you know, that's uh, you know, when we went to convention this past year, um, you know, you know, Tommy Barksdale and I, we usually, we usually travel together. Um, and, you know, we've ripped across the, to Phoenix and we've, you know, we, we've, we've drove, I'm not a huge fan of flying. So I, you know, and, and that, I, I'm, I'm all about a road trip. So, um, so we, you know, so we've did Phoenix a couple of times and, you know, and, and as far as being the furthest one, but like, so this year when we went to go to Orlando, um, his throws coach now was my former, um, um, thrower at, at Barton College in North Carolina when I was there. So, um, so, so, uh, Micah, it was his first time, um, right. Jaquarius, Jaquarius, you met those guys, you know, at convention. So, and then, uh, Jaquarius, who was at Mississippi state, um, you know, as an athlete or whatever. So he, you know, so those we're, we're so we're headed to Denver and, and, and they're asking questions, you know, they're young guys they are 24, 25. And, and so he, um, so they're asking questions of, of me and Tommy, like, Hey, what do we expect? What do we need to do? You know, what, whatever. And, uh, and Barksdale was like, uh, just, just follow Chad because he knows everybody. And so like, and so I just started laughing. I was like, I don't know everybody. I was like, I said, I just, and so, and so what I, you know, so it's funny you asked that question because I have, I have actually answered that for them as best I could. And I said, well, I said, it's not that I know everybody. I said, but I have my personal connections and then their connections. Like, so the people I've worked with over the years, like Ken Cox and different ones and people I've met through him. Um, and then, I have Keith's connections because, you know, when Keith and I have been in different places, so I have, you know, a ton of, you know, his connections. Um, like I can't remember like his wedding three, four years ago um, in San Marcos. I can't remember how many college track coaches it was that were there, but I want to say it was in the twenties. It was like 20 mm -hmm. something that were, you know, so it was kind of, kind of cool. I remember we made, all made a picture together or whatever, but they, um, uh, but you know, that was, that was my advice to them. I was like, you know, you just, I said, you kind of take each other's connections that they're already doing it now where the people that, you know, each of them went to um, high school with or not high school, but, but to college with and competed with um, are meeting each other's connections. So, you know, and, and it's also their, you know, high school coaches and, and their former, you know, college coaches and stuff, whether it be, you know, JJ Downs was, you know, was Aquarius's coach at, in high school. And then, uh, and then, you know, and then of course, Steve Dudley, you know, in college so that, you know, they just a uh, branch out, um, because it really becomes the coaching world becomes a really small world when you really start to, you know, feel around. And it's amazing who, who, you know, that also knows that person, you know, so um, in some capacity that you have no idea how they even could have met. Uh, uh, you know, shout out to Micah and Jaquarius. That's where I first met them as well. And really, you know, just good young coaches. Like I'm so excited to see, you know, five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road for them uh, and what they're going to be doing in this profession. I have a hunch uh, we'll be hearing their names qu quite often to be oh, yeah. real. Yeah, they're, they're, they're outgoing guys and they'll, they'll do well. So uh, again, to that young coach, <laughs> coach that's listening right now, you know, you've been, you've been to a lot of uh, conventions, uh, Chad, what if you know, there's a lot going on at convention, right? Not just only um, the personal and professional development, the, the actual, you know, uh, you know, classes and things like that. Uh, but there's the hallway talk, right? And that's some of the most valuable stuff that's there. Uh, there's committee meetings, there's awards meetings, there's the Bowerman, uh, the Hall of Fame. I mean, there's just so much going on. If, what would you advise? You, ha you have a young coach that's going and they, they look at the schedule and it's, it's overwhelming sometimes, right? Uh, what's the one thing besides stopping at the Gill Athletics booth, of course, we just know that would be your number one advice. But so what's your number two, like, don't miss, can't miss, you have to participate in X. Is it a committee meeting? Is it uh, the Hall of Fame banquet? What, what's the one thing, I'm sorry, the second thing uh, that you would advise you just cannot miss? You would be wasting your money and time if you didn't do 
this? Um, I would. I think it's. I think it's a little bit a two piece. Um, um, and and it could even be a three prong a three prong deal. But um, for me, and I know, I know some people, you know, will, will skip it and go, you know, go do their own thing. But not many. And and I, I think the Hall of Fame dinner and the Bowerman presentation are phenomenal. Um, uh, for 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 a little bit different reasons. You know, the Hall of Fame dinner to me is always um, because I. I am a very emotional guy and, 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 and I'm very much a people person and I'm very empathetic of, of other people's situations. And, you know, we talked about coach Cox being so, you know, heart connected to things. And I talk about, I talked to my athletes about, um, about that, about, you know, like, look, if, if your teammates hurt and you should have enough empathy, you know, if they've got something going on at home or whatever, you know, that should bother you a little bit, at, at least a little, you know? And, and so, um, you know, so with all the, with all that, you know, being the case, like the, the hall of fame dinner, you know, that's a, that's, Either somebody, you know, somebody that's, you know, on the very back end, or they've done, ret- they've already retired from from doing this, and and they're and they're going back through their life, you know, in a, in a very short span. But you're getting to hear, you know, what it meant to them, and and so, um, and kind of their journey in, in, a, in a nutshell. And, and of course, they have to, you know, fit it into a small speech, or if, or if it's somebody that has already passed away, you know, somebody's talking on their behalf. But um, but for me, that's a that's a very emotional night. That's you know, it kind of ties in. You know, you know, you sort of you sort of start thinking about you know, 20, 30 years down the road. You know, um, you know what um, what this life is going to look like, and you um, know, and, and then but you're also hearing some of the same things that you've encountered in already in your career um, with um, with coaching athletes and, and being around other coaches and things. So you're getting to hear their journey, and 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 you're getting to see you know the the real life the real life emotion of, of what that's like and, and, and kind of, um, and, and I think that that's a, you know, it's very raw. It's very, um, it's very moving. And, and, and you know, it always is. I, I can remember one that stands out my, in my mind was I think two years ago um, uh, when uh, her, name, her name eludes me and it shouldn't, but the, that just retired um, from Ohio state, the, the head coach. at um, uh, uh, Gill connections alum, Karen Dennis, Karen, who Karen, is one yeah. of my all time favorite interviews. Absolutely. If you have not listened to her interview uh, right now, uh, as soon as you're finished here with Chad, run to the to the Karen Dennis interview. One of the most amazing human beings in this world. Love her. So happy for her retirement, man. She's she deserves it. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. I just love so her. Karen, today. her so her her yeah. speech that night at, at yeah. was like like, you know, it just it was phenomenal because, you know, in the time she came up and, you know, and, and you know, as a as a female coach and and stuff and, and all of the things that she encountered and, and yeah. it just it was very it was very emotional and very moving. And at the time, like Hillary um, was sitting beside me um, and she, you know, um, and and she, you know, crying and stuff. And like so Hillary was was my was actually Coach Birdwell's athlete at Hoover High School. She was my athlete at Bevel State High, uh, Community College. And then um, she was Barstow's athlete at University of Montevallo. And then we ended up working together for a few years at the University of Montevallo. You know, when was able to hire another coach and I took the throws off of me and she coached the um, throws and I took the just jumps and multis. So, um, and I, and I told her, I said, as a young coach that I was like, if this doesn't, you know, she's like, this is unbelievable. And so she, like, she went right to Karen after she was like, I got to get to her, you know, wow. and tell her how much this means to me. So, you know, and, and, and Hillary's not currently in coaching now, but she, um, but I promise you, she didn't forget that moment, you sure. know, she was able to just, you know, get a picture with, um, with Karen and, and talk to her and, you know, and um, for a few minutes. And so, so that's for me, you know, the hall of fame, you know, dinner is an emotional night. And then the Bowerman presentation is just, you know, it's really awesome to be there. And, 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 you know, and every time John Anderson has done it, it's, you know, been the MC, just what a, what a remarkable guy for our sport and, you know, what he does for, for everybody. So, um, um, but, you know, that's a, um, that is a very, uh, uh, a very fun evening and, and, and being a part of that. And you, you feel, feel a little bit special every time you sit there in the, in the, in the crowd and just get to take that in. Yeah. I just pulled up the list for this year's coaches hall of fame since you brought that up. Cause you're right. I mean, listening to the journeys of people uh, and you know, you've been saying the word connection several times. There's a distinct reason why the podcast was called the Gill athletics connections podcast. You, you nailed it. Exactly. Right. So this year down uh, over in Denver, we're going to have Josh Colbreth. I used to work uh, with his son, Jahan at the um, uh, Olympic training center in Chula Vista. Uh, his dad, 
already was a Hall of Famer. <laughs> so uh, Greg Kraft, former head coach now uh, recently of Arizona State, uh, I have an amazing experience with him about really selflessness. He told me a story as it relates to the Pac-12 conference meet in Arizona State and Oregon, and uh, it, it was quite amazing the selflessness that he um, uh, showed towards the to the uh, to the Pac-12. So Greg Kraft. Uh, Halston Taylor, longtime MIT coach. I've uh, worked with this man for a long time. An amazing, amazing human being. Uh, Art Venegas. Do I need to say anything else besides Art Venegas? I mean, come on. Throws coach you is who Art Venegas is. Uh, here's another one. I mean, these these really are. It's amazing. I, I don't know how to keep saying them higher and higher because they're at the top peak, right? Mark Wetmore, University of Colorado. Come on, man. Steeplechase uh, magnet there. Uh, Sue Williams, who I don't know very well, uh, unfortunately, but I was reading her bio from like UC Davis and such. Uh, really a pioneer, man, like a, a, quite an amazing uh, bio. So that's who is going into the uh, Hall of Fame this year. And uh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear, you know, Mark Wetmore and Art Venegas and those guys all have just like stories that you could just sit there like around the campfire all night, <laughs> like keep going. Don't bring Don't take them off the stage. Let's, let's keep listening. Well, let's keep moving on. Cause you know, what we're really doing right here, Chad, is we're having like a pre hall of fame interview for one day when you <laughs> go into the hall of fame. So that, let's would be, that would be amazing. I, yeah. don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if I'll ever fall in with some of those men and women, but um but what an honor that would be, I, you know, it would be, it would be phenomenal for sure. And, you know, and, you know, I talked about possibly being three prongs to the convention. Oh, yeah. I, I would say like you talked, you know, you said hallway talk, you know, I think that, you know, just, just those conversations at one, two, three o'clock in the morning at convention are, are, are amazing. I, you know, I sit in a composed symposium in Orlando in, in December um, uh, with Sean, you know, Sean Carlson was, you know, coach Carlson at the time at Notre Dame now at university of Tennessee, but um and, and after listening to him, I, I knew I was like, OK, at some point this week, I've got to pick I've got I've got a question for him. I've got to ask him a question. And so um, it was about one thirty in the morning when he came passing back through the lobby of the, you know, the Marriott. And I was like, coach, coach, let me let me get you for a second. And, you know, and so he broke off for a minute and I was able to ask what I needed to ask. And, you know, so um, because, you know, he, here where I'm at now at, at MMI, some of my service academy uh, prep um, athletes um, um, are, are very uh uh, academically inclined, like, like what he deals with at Notre Dame. So, um, so from a training standpoint and what he was talking about and, and, and putting some things together, it, I could re very much relate to some stuff that I'd been encountering. So I wanted to, I wanted to run some things by and make sure I was, felt like I was on the, in the right, in the, in the right uh, uh, place as far as, you know, some things went. So, um, you know, and, and again, very accommodating, took time, you know, to answer what I needed him to answer. And, you know, and, and that's, and that's the way, and that's the way most coaches are. I mean, I, I think, you know, I've, I've, I've learned that, you know, you see a lot of times what you're going to, you're going to see in the news with different sports is, is the bad, you know, you know, like a coach, uh, coach, coach messes up or something and, and does something that they shouldn't do. And then that's what gets kind of, you know, you know, broadcast out more, more so than other things. But, um, there's a lot of good people and you know that, I mean, you've met a ton of them, a lot more of them than I have, but there's a lot of good people in our profession and, and doing, doing this on a daily basis and they're in it for the right reasons. And so, um, you know, luckily I've been, been able to meet, meet a lot of those folks myself. In the amazing podcast timing world. Uh, so this will be news to you, but it won't be news to, to you who's listening. So Sean Carlson was just on the podcast, uh, probably about two weeks before you're listening to this uh, right now in September. So uh, I would agree. I love that Sean, you know, I, we tend to think it's, it's really weird. Like we think because a, a coach, a person who is a coach has a big name school on their chest, Notre Dame in Sean's case, now university of Tennessee, like that they're going to big time us. Like I'm, I'm MMI. He's not going to talk to us. I don't know that I actually hear that very often in the track world. I don't know about football and basketball and such, but I have never heard, never, you know, like you said, Chad, I know air quotes here, every my goal is to know every track coach in the world <laughs> in America specifically. Uh, but I have never had a story where someone said, Hey man, that coach, I tried to talk to them and they just, they just kind of pushed me off. You know, I've, I've never heard that. In fact, all I hear is the exact opposite. It's like, man, I went up to uh, coach so-and-so and da-da-da. And, -so and da -da -da, and 
they talk to me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, you're a human. You know, that's, that, that's kind of how they got to where they are is because they treated people like humans. So it kind of fits in with their success model. The other thing I wanted to add to that. Uh, so shout out to Sean, if you haven't listened to his podcast, he's got a great, we really delve into uh, the University of Tennessee and what they're doing uniquely with track and cross country coaching. It was really eye opening, fascinating. And we, we did a lot of myth busting with that interview as well. So again, if you haven't listened to it, it's a great uh, one hour. It's one of my shortest <laughs> podcast we have one hour uh, with Sean Carson. So go back and listen to that one. The other thing to add to what you said there, Chad, you talked about the midnight 1 uh, a.m. hallway talks, right? And that's, you know, funnily, that's what we hear. Funnily, is that a real word? Uh, We hear a lot is the midnight conversations. Don't be, if you're listening and that intimidates you because you're not a night person, maybe you're a morning person. Uh, Jokingly, I want to say you better become a night person for the one week at convention. However, that's not true because if you're dealing with a stratum, 1,500 plus coaches, you've got a segment that are morning people. God bless. Uh, you've seen this chat. How many times? Cause I got to be up early to get to the booth and work and all that stuff. I, I'm really the guy who doesn't sleep at convention. You guys that are up till 1am are sleeping until nine. I, I'm up at it, buddy. Uh, but how many times do I get up at five, four 30 in the morning there at convention and people are coming back from their five mile runs like yep. Houston Franks. You, you always. always do that crap. And I'm like, how I, I can't do five miles fresh. Uh-uh. middle of the afternoon these guys are doing it so don't be intimidated if you hear that midnight 1 a.m thing it definitely happens 100 percent. but however i know of plenty of amazing conversations that are happening at 5 a.m 6 a.m 7 a.m right outside the starbucks you know those chairs that they put right out there how many amazing conversations so if you're a morning person don't get intimidated with that there are still awesome other morning people coaches out there uh, that you'll have uh, awesome conversations with okay let's keep going so you, you've kind of name dropped a couple of schools here let's put these in order where do we do what do we go after birmingham southern so birmingham southern i um uh my second season, we uh, second year I'm there. We uh, that would be, um, I guess twenty. Let's see, eleven. I was there eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen. So the, going out of the spring and out of the spring and into the summer of twenty thirteen, uh, I guess it was. I um I talked to Coach Cox about. Um, I, I was living. Um, uh, uh, well, let's see. I just got married that person. So Natasha and I were living in Tuscaloosa. We were living in Tuscaloosa, and and I was driving back and forth. Uh, to, to Birmingham Southern from, from Tuscaloosa. And, um, and I, I kind of went, I was like, well, I kind of want to make a little more money, whatever. So I, um, so I talked to coach, I talked to Kenneth about getting a part-time job with Gander Mountain, uh, re, you know, retail in, in, uh, in, in uh, Tuscaloosa there um, and working some hours. And he's like, yeah, during the summer, we got some downtime, you know, we'll, you know, especially in the evenings on weekends, whatever you, you, you'll be able to do that. So, so I applied for a position to, to do that. And, um, um, I interviewed at the, at, at Gander Mountain, and and the, uh, the the two people that interviewed me was like, you know, hey, like, have you thought about going into uh, or applying? Or would you be interested in applying for like a supervisor position or you know whatever? And I was like, well, I mean, wouldn't that entail more hours? Like, I, I'm not really, I'm just trying to be part time. I wasn't trying to be full time or whatever. So um, they were like, well, yeah. And so then they they wanted me to meet with the store manager, and I was like, well, I'll give it the time of day. But I, so I mentioned it to Kenneth. I said, well, I'm going to see what I'm going to fill out, see what they're talking about. Well, long story short, he wanted, they wanted to bring me on full time as a supervisor. Um, and then the company was growing so fast at the time that, you know, the idea was, is, you know, again, kind of like Dix had told me a few years earlier, like with, you know, having a degree, having experience, um, you know, I can move through the company quick and all this kind of stuff. So, um, so ultimately the store manager um, uh, uh, offered me the position. Uh, and, and the pay was right at the same, but the opportunity to grow was like super quick. It seemed like, and so I had a decision to make and I, you know, I I didn't really, I had no intentions of getting out of coaching at the time really, but at the same time, I was also in a place in my life and in my heart where I was really wanting to make more money, um, pay some, pay some debt off, get some stuff, you know, some debt out of the way sort of thing. So, um, so I, I I talked to Kenneth, we had a, you know, real good conversation. And of course he, he was going to have my back regardless of what I decided to do and support which, you know, whichever direction I wanted to go. And so um, ultimately I made the decision to, to um, finish out the, you know, so I went ahead and started with Gander Mountain and, but I finished out the summer recruiting and in, in, into the, into August. And then I picked up full time with Gander Mountain and, and, and stepped away from coaching at that time. Um, I was with Gander Mountain for, in Tuscaloosa for five months. And I went on a store, put together a new store in uh, over the, 
two week span, we put together a new store in Dalton, Alabama, and then also was on the weekends sliding over to Albany, Georgia to start that store. And off of that, the district manager had recommended me to be hired in a, as a, as a hard lines manager in a, um, in the store in Jackson, Tennessee. And so the store manager came by Tuscaloosa, interviewed me in November, offered me the job. And then within, you know, days I was moving to Tennessee at the time. So, um, you know, so, and I, I loved my position in Tuscaloosa. I kind of got through to the wolves in, in, in Jackson, Tennessee, and that store, it was a completely different, it was just a completely different dynamic setup. The store had been there a long time, it, you know, and um, it wasn't one of the new smaller stores. You know, they sold, um, they actually sold far less um, uh, guns and ammo and a whole lot more, you know, um, uh, apparel and that kind of thing. So, um, and uh, but all the, the sections of the store was different, but but I started on Black Friday week, and that was that, you know as the hard lines manager, that was a horrible situation <laughs> for you know in itself. So and because that store was making a ridiculous amount of money, I think we made at the time I was in Tuscaloosa store, we had made like forty five thousand on a on a Saturday, um, you know, and um, we made I think uh, nearly two hundred thousand I think the day of um, you know um, of Black I own Black Friday and then the day uh, and then the day after. So you know it was. Um, it was, it was crazy. And, you know, so, um, but, but anyway, we, I actually, um, it didn't take long doing that and working the crazy hours that I was working. And even though I was making more money, um, to figure out like, I do not want to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it just, it, you know, I was like, okay, I've chased the money and you know, this is not this the, the, I'll, for all the wrong reasons kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I never, I, I even look back now and I don't necessarily, I don't regret the move because it did, it helped me get my heart in the right place. Um, and, and understand where I needed to be. Um, but, but I was able to, so I managed to get to uh, late February uh, and, and I guess it was in, in the, um, there was a spot, a supervisor position in receiving at Gander Mountain in Florence, Alabama, it came open. And so um, I was like, okay, well, I could, I could get back to, um, uh, get back to Florence, get, get home. Because uh, Natasha was having trouble getting a job in, you know, in Jackson. So she was, we, we were back and forth at the time. Mm. Um, and so, um, and so I, um, I was like, well, I can get closer to her and she, you know, she's working in Tuscaloosa. We can, you know, whatever, we can kind of manage her, whatever, a little bit better. So she, um, uh, so I get to Florence and, and I knew that was, I, I was like, okay, it's an opportunity for me to work. Cause the, the hours in, on that position was like seven to seven to three or something like that. Or it, it was like a, during the day, during the week. So I knew, I knew I could leave there and go to Rogers high school where I, my alma mater and help with the track team. So I went out there on, as soon as they started practicing and, and, and said, Hey, you know, and talked to the coach that was doing, doing it at the time, coach Brown, um, she was still um, helping. And so she knew me, um, uh, Jerry Fultz didn't know me, but we, you know, we got to talking and I, I said, look, I don't want to step on any toes, but anywhere you could use help, just tell me and I'll, and I'll help out. And so of course they welcomed my help. And so I was able to, so that was where the, where the joy came in again was I was able to leave, leave work, and go back, go straight to the track and, and help those kids. So, you know, so I was able to do that from, um, from March to, um, to the end of the season, you know, to the state meet. And, um, and then uh, somewhere along those lines, we, we get to the summer. Um, Natasha was coaching um, some, um, a, a, like a uh, uh, basketball, girls basketball team, like a summer, summer league basketball team. And, uh, and I started a, um, uh, junior Olympics team. I started out in, in my area, my home, uh, hometown area. So, um, I started a, um, a, um, a USATF program and, and we, um, we competed and, you know, and actually that summer went out to, um, I had five to go to junior Olympic nationals in Houston, but the, um, the, uh, but what we, what I'd done somewhere along the lines of the midsummer, I remember, um, you know, Natasha saying, Hey, you know, it's probably, you probably need to get back into coaching. Hmm. Well, you know, a day or two later, she was saying, I already, I should have knew better than to say that to you. Cause I like <laughs> that night I was like online, like you know, looking. And so, and so that, you know, so it was like, Oh, well, you know, and so I'm on the coach association and I'm looking at the jobs and, and there's Jacksonville state and there's GA spot. And I was like, well, I can get back on my masters with coach Ray. I'm going to contact. So at the time, Asha Gibson was still there. So I, I, you know, I knew I could contact her quick on Facebook. So I contacted her. She's actually working at the Crossplex now in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. That's right. I saw that. Yeah. Just left. Uh, just left Drake. So, um, but I um, contacted her, filling her out. She was like, "Yeah, actually, the GA spot's a really good, you know, really good position. That's going to be most likely the jumps." And I said, "Well, that's me." And you know, and then he was thinking I had to hire a throws coach. And so, um, so I um, 
So then I reached out to, I just, I just decided I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply, but I'm also going to just type Coach Ray an email. So I sent Coach Ray an email and, uh, and uh, love, love Steve Ray to death. Like, you know, what a, what a, what a character he is. And so like he, um, so I sent him this long email. Well, like later that day or the next day, I get a big long email back. And so I'm like reading the email and he, and he writes the, he types the email like he talks and it was, it was fantastic. It was just like us sitting here having a conversation or something. And so, um, uh, but anyway, it goes through the thing and, and in a nutshell, he's like, look, I've got 40 people who applied for this position, but you, you've recruited the state, you know, the state, we know each other. Like, if you want this, this is yours. I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to do anything else. This is your, this is yours if you want it. And I'm like, okay. Uh, well, I didn't expect that to happen that fast. And it'd been like not even two days, you know, so, you know, since I'd even been looking. So, um, but anyway, I was able to, I was able to get back into coaching, um, um, with coach Trey at Jacksonville state and, um, and then Brian Corn, um, you know, you know, got to know him really well. You know what a fantastic throws coach um, he is, and so like he, you know, he spent you know his time there, and then he was at Eastern Michigan for about four years uh, as well, and then now he's at New Mexico State. And so, um, but um, you know, we had a great great year, and and uh, and you know, I got to know Coach Ray um, a lot better, and uh, and 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 Brian, and, and that kind of thing. But um, that was my um, forte back into coaching, and also my master's degree, and then. Um, when the next spring rolled around, um, the they were fixing to hire a new full time coach at a uh, um, assistant coach at Montevallo, and and so Barksdale came calling, and so um, and uh, and so I was able to get right back into a full time um, position pretty pretty quick, and um, and go and go from there. So, in the interest of time, I don't want to rush the story, but there's a lot of cool things going on at MMI. So I want to make sure that we have time for that. So let's go through, and it's hard to do this because we're at the Montevallo, Tommy Barksdale. <laughs> Tommy, I know you're listening as well, man. Love you to death. Uh, just some great time there. Another amazing facility. I, I love how, how they have their set up there uh, with their colors and everything. It just, it's just a really fantastic facility there so let's let's do a little bit of fast forwarding and what i mean by this tell us the next few stops uh, as we get to to mmi and if there are any um important aspects from each of those stops please you know interject there but let's let's hit the fast forward button just a little bit so we can get to what's i mean there's an exciting time going on at mayor and military institute so i want to give it i want to give it its proper time so let's uh what, what do we do here from montevallo so uh you know, so when, when that's when the position at Montevallo came open, I, I had talked, to, you know, first thing I did was step into Coach Ray's office. Hey, you know, um, I didn't intend on being here a year. I was going to be here too. finish my master's and then make a move. You know, what is your opinion? Like, I will stay, you know, if and he was like, look, I'd love to keep you. He said, I, and if and if we had if I had a full time position and open it up or something, I would tell you to stay. But um he said, but, you know, Barstow's got a program that's growing. They're built, they built a new track. They're one of the only teams, in, you know, college-wise in the state that are that are moving forward and with, with a lot of things. He said, you guys are friends. You've known each other. He said, you know, you've got to use this for the stepping stone that it is to get back into coaching. And get, he said that was the goal. He said, so. What a great story of selflessness, by the way. Because Coach Ray, shout out to Coach Ray. He's, he's an amazing human being. He had every reason to be selfish there. Hey, you know, he's losing a coach. He's going to have to go search for another coach. That in, that in itself is its own stressful thing. Another hat that you wear as a coach hiring and evaluating staff, right? So no one would have faulted him for saying, hey, Chad, you really need to buckle down, get this grad program. You're building something here. You've recruited, you know, he, he easily could have said, you know, for his own reasons, like just stay, Chad, give me another year for crying out loud. However, instead, what did he do? Hey, you know what? You know what I think might be best for you, Chad? I, I think this might be the right move for you. What, what a, I don't know that there are many more stories of selflessness or selfless, selflessness there than that, man. Shout out to, to what a great example he gave right there. Keep going. I just wanted to make sure we pointed that out. Cause that yeah, he, you know, awesome. it was, it was awesome. And I, you know, I told him, you know, I was so appreciative and, and he, you know, he actually came calling a few years later to try to you know hire me back as an assistant and, and then ultimately wanted me to step in as the head when he retired. And, but, you know, this didn't work out at the time, but, um, but so, but at that point, he, you know, he was just like, look, you know, this is, this is an awesome opportunity. You, you know, the, the goal was to get back into coaching. Um, you know, I was married. We, you know, he said, you can't, he said, you, 
you and right, Tulsa right. need to be under the same roof. The, the back and forth from Tuscaloosa Amen. to was not going to, you know, you got to make it happen. So he was 100% behind behind what we had going on and what what Tommy was doing at Montevallo and um, him and Julia at the time. And so and so I, I just uh, um, it was very much uh, appreciated that he that he felt that way and it that. wasn't even any hesitation. Um, you know, so so I so I go to Montevallo and um, and ultimately I end up I'm, I'm I start out with jumps, small ties, and throws. Um, and Hillary was assisting with some of the throws as a, as like an intern. And then, um, uh, the next year we were able to hire a, um, uh, another full-time coach. So we was able to add her to, to um, on officially full-time. So she took over the throws and, and I just went jumps multis from, at that point for the next two years. So I was there three years. Um, uh, I did apply, apply a few places. I, I took the, ended up taking the head job, uh, head track field cross country position at Barton college and, um, in Wilson, North Carolina, uh, an NCAA Division II school as well, and so, um, and uh, you know, so I land there. I, I get there in September. Um, you know, Coach Nicholson um, had done a great, you know, Coach Nick had done a great job with with the program up to that point, and um, for the couple of years he was there. And um, but ultimately, it it was just a, it was the, uh, it was it, it wasn't the best timing um, for the move at the time. You know, um, at that point in my life, I, I've told a lot of people that had that that had that have been ten years earlier been a great move you know because it was it's a great school it's a great place um it just wasn't you know same kind of deal like we were trying to get we were trying to sell a house we had things that was happening you know natasha couldn't get moved you know she was finishing her um last um semester of her grad degree um at montevallo mm-hmm. um i was still taking a class or two um each, each semester at jsu to finish mine as well and so you know she was you know it was just we were very um you know, back and forth and, and it was, and it was kind of a struggle. And so we got to, you know, we got to May or got to March and, um, you know, and, and, and Larry Russell, who was, um, uh, you know, all American three years before I, you know, or three different times before I got there. Um, we went to indoor nationals at, at Pittsburgh state in Kansas. And, um, you know, he was fourth in the country, all American new school record and a long jump, just, you know, we had, a, we had a great time, but I knew I had to have a sit down with AD after, after, um, indoor. I just, I was like, I got to get back to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a nervous wreck. I was absolutely a nervous wreck because I didn't, I'd never at that point in my life, I'd never in any, at any point ever left a job without having another one lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, and, but I had been at home a, a few weeks earlier and, and a friend of, you know, a friend of mine um, said she could put me to work doing some stuff. I, I knew I could get back on, you know, doing whatever at, at big sporting goods. Cause I'd worked in there kind of part-time um, while I was at Montevallo some um, early mornings, unloading trucks, whatever, and receiving because, you know, I did it so much in, in the past. So um, just to make a little extra money. So I knew I had, I had places I could, you know, at least make m- enough money to pay bills. And that was all I was needed to do until something would open. So I uh, had a conversation with my athletic director after the indoor season. I was like, look, I, you know, he even talked to me about trying to stick it out through the outdoor season. Um, but I actually felt like I said, I just don't think that this, I thought, I think this, I really do feel in my heart like this is the right time. I said, I need, I need to make the move now, not later. Um, I said, because I don't want to be halfway in, halfway out. I said, if I, mm-hmm. if, if, if my, you know, if I'm feel like I'm partially in Alabama, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing my job in North Carolina with these kids. And so, um, you know, well, young people and they're, and they're not kids, obviously, but you know, college age athletes, but they, um, they, uh, so, you know, ultimately make the move back to Alabama, um, that March. And I, you know, I'm, I was working, uh, I was unloading, uh, I was in receiving at, Old Navy some mornings uh, uh, at the mall. I was uh, uh, unloading trucks at Dick's part of the time in the other mornings. And then I was uh, working evenings loading trucks at UPS. So, um, and that was about to kill me because um, for the month that I did that, I, I had been so long since I'd done that type of labor. Um, now I used to do it all the time, you know, back in the day when Hurst and I, when Keith and me and all the guys was hauling hay from the time we were 14, 15, mm-hmm. 16, 17 years old every day in the hot heat of Alabama. But, um, it's been a long time since I could handle that, but um, so ultimately just was on the lookout for jobs. I got back home, uh, got back to central Alabama and um, was, um, was back in Calera, living in Calera. Um, and, you know, I helped, you know, Tommy run a meet, I think that, you know, in, in May and um, helped Coach Birdwell run a meet at Birmingham Southern, her, her uh, USATF meet um, um, in May. And, and then, um, uh, st- you know, was on the lookout for positions and, um, when this position, when the MMI position came open, I actually, um, um, I didn't know about it until, until Tommy called me, um, Barksdale called me and said, Hey, you know, um, and it was one of the assistant ADs at Montevallo had, you know, had knew the, um, 
he knew Coach Downs. He knew the baseball coach here. And um, so somehow he, you know, he knew that the position was open and it was head cross country. And I'm a mostly, I mean, I'm a, this, I mean, I've coached everything. Like you said, you know, you, you, at some point you do. And, um, and so I've coached every, every area um, up to this point, but um, in 2019, but I had, I never, um, I didn't really consider on taking a, just a head cross country only position. Um, so I did, I, at first I wasn't even going to apply. And actually I remember talking to Tommy about it. I was like, man, I just don't know, but the pay was really solid, um, for, you know, in, for in JUCO position, um, it was going to be more than I'd ever made, you know? And so, um, in any position, um, and, and actually the, what kind of, what, what led me to, to apply was I, I looked at my athletic director's, um, bio online and I kind of dove into that a little deeper and, and seeing that she'd been here a long time and, and, and every sport had been, had, uh, been added since she had been here. So the, the, I saw the growth is mm. that, was, that was the thing I seen, I seen growth. Um, I also found out that there was already a track on campus. And so when I figured that out, I thought, okay, you know, in my head, I had it already wheels turning. There <laughs> might be the possibility that at some point we would add track and field. And so, um, so I, you know, I did consider not applying it and I thought, no, you know, I, this could be good. You know, it's an hour, it's an hour or so from me. Um, you know, let me, let me look into it. And I didn't, you know, I didn't, I was like, at least, you know, fill it out. I didn't know what the military aspect of it would be. Um, I had no idea what the tie in from military and athletic standpoint would be, but, um, but man, it's been a phenomenal three years and, you know, I'm starting my fourth year and, um, like just unbelievable, um, people here, we got great people in, in great positions. So talk to us about that. You're in year three, so you now understand the school much better. It's a it's a very unique school. I remember it from my time at Troy, hearing about it and just really not understanding it. Give us kind of the rundown. What is Marion Military Institute? You said it's a JUCO, so it's a two year school. Uh, the word military is in it, so that's different. What tell us about MMI? So so we are a mil- we're we're a military college. Um, we're we're part of the Alabama Community College system now, and have been for the last several years. Um, used to be private and used to actually have a high school attached to it um, as well. Um, but um, we were part of the, we're part of the community college system of Alabama. Um, and, um, but we're one of only four prep schools in the country um, for the, um, for the uh, military. Um, we're the oldest one in the, uh, in the, in the country with the oldest, uh, the oldest uh, prep school, um, uh, the stat, you know, 1842. So, um, so we've been around a long, long time. And so, um, you know, we, we're also the only one that, that services all five academies. So um, that sends, that sends people to all five, uh, five of the academies. So, um, but um, there, the military in the name is definitely something I had to get used to because in the first few, I'd say first two or three months of recruiting, if I cold called anybody, you know, just, you know, calling a recruit, um, no, with no idea if they had any, um, you know, um, aspiration to go military or anything. Um, it was, it was like, as soon as I said, this is Coach Valentine, Mary Military Institute, they just, if they weren't looking at military, they just shut down. They, they, all they heard was military and they thought they were signing, you know, they thought they were, you know, signing up for the military. And that's not it at all. Like, you know, you, there's, there's a non-military route where you can come here and get a two-year associate's degree. And, you know, a basketball player can go on to, you know, to play basketball at the University of Alabama or, you know, Georgia Southern or wherever they want to go. And so, um, in the same way, you know, with track and field and cross country now, you know, now as well. So, um, but, but we have, um, we basically have three programs and, and, and the, um, uh, one is the service Academy program. And that's, you know, so they, uh, if, if they can be non-sponsored, so, you know, so if they, if they're, if they if they don't get into say the Coast Guard Academy out of high school and that, but they want that extra, you know, they're trying to get ACT scores up, they're trying to get their physical ability up, um, GPA high, whatever it may be, um, or a combination of, of everything. Um, they can they can either pay their own way or they're here on some type of scholarships, you know, whether it be athletic or whatever, um, to to come here for ideally usually it's a year, um, and, and then they would and then they would get their um, service academy appointment. Hopefully after two semesters, um, they would get appointed to the academy, um, whichever academy it, it might be. Um, they um, and then the sponsored the sponsored um, um, folks that are in that that SAP program are actually they've they've actually been to say Coast Guard training over the summer, you know, for three or four weeks or whatever it is. And, and, um, and they're like, you know, right on the brink of getting into the Academy, but they're like, okay, we got, we're going to place you here at MMI for, we're going to pay X amount for your school. You're going to go to MMI for a year. 
and then you're pretty much guaranteed a spot back here in Annapolis or whatever, you know, wherever it is, you know, next fall. So, um, so we, so I have a combination of the non-sponsored and the sponsored, you know, Coast Guard Academy, Air Force, you know, different ones. Um, and then, um, an, another area that's really, really neat. And I think is, is a fantastic program is our ECP program, which is our early commissioning program. So, um, they can come here if they're looking at the army, if they're looking to go army, you can come here, you go, well, you come to what's called Tiger Camp for a week and um, and it, uh, at the end of June, 1st of July, then you're sent to, this is going into your first year of college, you go to um, uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky for basic training for three weeks, and then you come here, you go, you go, you start your classes, you know, if you're, if you're track across country, we're training, we're doing our thing, you're doing PT with, with the military side three days a week, you got, you know, you got your class schedule, um, but you, you go to school, you've been to basic, and you, you go fall, spring, um, and then in the, and then the and then that summer, the second summer, you go to advanced camp in Fort Knox, and um, and then come back for fall spring again, and then when you so in the two year after two years you graduate with your associate's degree that morning, and in the afternoon you step off stage and commission into the army as a second lieutenant officer. Um, salary, I mean you're go like I just like this past year I had three girls, two two twins from Florida and a girl from Alabama that you know they're all at Syracuse University now working on their bachelor's degrees. They're they're second lieutenant officers, so that they have PT, I think, twice a week, but they're the leaders of PT at Syracuse because they're here versus wow. where everybody else is. So, um, you know, so they're, they've, they've got to a, to a point. So um, it's, a, it's a really awesome program if you're going – you end up ahead of the people that are at West Point, you know, basically. Yeah, even though I, we have, you know. I was an Air Force ROTC scholarship winner. So out of high school, I went to a school in Chicago where I was in Air Force ROTC. Uh, with the plan that, you know, you go through four years to get your degree and then you're a commissioned officer in the Air Force. This seems like, like, I, I wish I'd have known about this because uh, I didn't hack it in that program. All academics, I just couldn't be an engineer. Uh, but I love the Air Force and, you know, my family had been in the Air Force, etc. This seems like, I mean, you're talking about this is a quite amazing actually <laughs> hearing yeah. this ECP it's, program. It's an awesome, it's an awesome program. And, you know, and it's a, it's an opportunity to, you know, because those girls are going to have their, um, so they're getting their, you know, school paid for, you know, through their bachelor's. Um, they're essentially, you know, what, four years into a six year or seven year commitment. And then we just have to recontract or whatever later. Wow. But like, um, you know, they're, um, you know, they're setting themselves up in a, in a, in a very quick, you know, very quick route, you know, basically, and, and, and going to be debt free doing it. And they, you know, they ran, you know, they ran mm. cross country here, but, um, but, you know, they'll get to do, you know, whatever they decide to do at Syracuse. Um, you know, so that the ECP program is phenomenal. And then and then we also have the leadership education program, the LEP, which is just simply, you know, associate's degree and, and, and move on kind of thing. And um, you get, you know, get your two year degree and you can go, you know, they can leave and go, you know, you know play basketball, baseball, softball, run track, play tennis, you know, whatever. So, hmm. uh, you know, cross country. So we got, you know, we've got um, got those sports and it's um, the dynamics pretty, pretty awesome. Like, you know, because everybody here is active. And so like that was, you know my first few days in 2019, I remember pulling on the camps like 515 and I, you know, it's not even the light outside. And I'm used to the only people you see running around is the cross country runners, you know, at this time of year at daylight. And like, there's like 200 people going to the track and I'm like, man, this is different. Like, you know, this, so, like, so, you know, definitely, definitely kind of a, a different dynamic when you've got that many people on the move, but, um, but it's, you know, it's awesome to, to see the growth and, you know, there's, there's good, there's good set of coaches here and, you know, and, um, you know, we've got, we've got a phenomenal athletic director. You, you met briefly, you know, in the beginning, we were, you know, getting set up for this and stuff. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a huge thing. And, and, you know, um, as well as I do, when, when you've got, um, good administration, um, uh, it, you know, everything will kind of click along, um, uh, you know, really well. Yeah. There's, there's no replacing good leadership. That, exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and we had alluded to this and you, you gave us the gym that when you took the cross country only position, that there was a track on campus. Uh, what's some, and we alluded to this, like the excitement that's going on in MMI. Talk to us about what's recently changed. Uh, healthy things grow and MMI is growing in track and field. Yep. So we, um, you know, so we did, uh, you know, president um, Colonel Mullahan was, you know, um, you know, brought it up in January. We it, 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 we'd kind of been talking about it off and on for a little while. Um, my athletic director and I, you know, Dr. Ivy, you know, she and I had discussed it some, and and then 
you know, Colonel Mullahan, we knew that we, they wanted to add a sport at some point, um, you know, and, and, and it was a matter of, um, you know, he, I think we were actually at a baseball game um, in February, because I'm, I'm up to this point, I've been the, um, uh, the game day administrator for the other sports as well. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, second to the, you know, to AD as far as, you know, being in, at the spring games um, and, and stuff, you know, um, well, usually when she is too, but like, you know, but especially when she can't be there and stuff, because she's on so many uh, committees with the national office and then conference and things. So she has to, a lot of the women's sports, women's sport administrators type stuff, you know, she, she has to attend. So, um, so, but the, you know, Colonel Mullahan came up and was like, so coach, you think we could add track and field, you know, and, and, you know, gradually add it and, and build the facilities we need and, and do what we need to do with what we have and, you know, not go too crazy with the cost and everything in the beginning, but gradually build up. And I said, absolutely. I said, we've got, you know, we have a track, we've got, you know, we can gradually, you know, spill the distance into it, add some sprinters, hurdlers, and then, you know, jumpers and things and, and throwers. And, and so, you know, it started to really grow legs in, in January and February. And, um, and then when I really seen that we, you know, it looked like we, we may, you know, for sure add track and field, I, I told, I told Colonel Mullahan and, and Dr. Ivy, I was like, look, if, you know, I said, if this is something we're going to do, I was like, you know, if we can announce it, you know, pretty quick, I said, I can, I can, I can recruit pretty, pretty quickly, at least through the outdoor season, you know, in, in the state and around. Um, I was like, but it's going to be hard the, the longer we wait because we're, I mean, the, the season thins out once schools, you know, let out for the summer, it's harder to get a hold of coaches and athletes and, and, and that kind of thing. So, or get into schools and, and stuff. So, um, but, you know, it, it kind of, it, it grew legs pretty quick. And, and now they, you know, if this rain would stop, they've got, they're prepared. You know, we've actually, we ordered our forms from, from you guys, from Gill Athletics to, to get the, to get our throws area set for, for shot and, and discus and everything. And, um, and we're going to lay the runways for triple jump, high jump, or triple jump, long jump. And we're going to lay the, um, uh, uh, and, and be ordering our high jump, you know, landing system and stuff. So, you know, very soon. And so, um, I'll be putting in a big uh, order um, to you before too long, uh, Coach Burns and I. You know, I was able to hire an assistant, so you know, so um, so Malik is here, and you know, young guy, you know, very very energetic guy, um, you know, former um, uh, collegiate thrower. At, he, he threw at uh, Southeastern Louisiana University, and um, and then and then used the COVID year. He was actually um, at a uh, uh, University of Cumberland's as well for a year in Kentucky, and then now he um, he just finished his master's um, and, and stuff. So. We, um, uh, you know, we're trying to trying to build, and you know, we, we're adding. You know, we I think we've got uh, 36 athletes right now, and, and 11 about 11 or 12 of them. Are, so from March 14th to now, you know, was able to get about 12 that were just exclusively track and field. The cross country, the distance side, I've I've been able to grow that every year and and, and add more depth. And so we actually have more depth this year than we've had, and um, you know, super excited about that, and you know, hoping that's a uh, hoping that kind of you know, steers us in the direction we want to go. We're, you know, we're going to, um, you know, again, I, I keep talking about relationships and having the right people in the right places. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a big thing, you know, when it comes to, you know, like I say, I've had great mentors and bosses and you know, presidents and ADs in other places, but, but Dr. Ivy's phenomenal. And she's a, she's a huge asset to what we do here. She's fair across the board. She wants everybody to win, but she also wants everybody to do it the right way. Hmm. And, um, and so, um, you know, she's very, you know, she's very good with compliance and getting, I mean, just like just everything. I mean, and you, you know, you know, the drill at a JUCO, you know, she's, she's DAD, she's compliant, she's the SID. So everything that's going out on our, you know, everything's getting posted on our website is her. I mean, that's, she's doing all of the, all of our stuff, our, a lot of our media stuff. I don't know how she, there's enough hours in a day for her to do everything she needs to do. Yeah, that surprises me. For, I was going to give a shout out to Dr. Ivy because, again, leadership matters. And what I was going to comment on, and now I know the answer, you know, when we add programs, first of all, bravo for adding programs. We should always, you know, we all win in the track world when programs are added. Uh, so I'm super, super excited and happy for Marion Military Institute to add track and field under Dr. Ivy's leadership. Uh, but what I was really impressed, one of the things that I was really impressed with is you were going out and recruiting and signing these kids the announcements that were being made, these were professional. Like I love the little, you know, social media cards that have the kid and where they're from and the events and things like that. Like that's just an added extra touch that makes those kids feel special that they, that they deserve, by the way. So I love that. And uh, it could have been excused for a first year, not even a first year program. You haven't had your first year yet for a new program to not do that and just be like, oh yeah, you know, so-and-so is coming. Great. 
the the professionalism of the announcements was really quite amazing and impressive. And so on one hand, I'm not shocked that it was Dr. Ivy doing that because of the leadership component. Uh, however, it, it's just awesome. You guys are really establishing yourself as, as a first class program from the jump, from the get go, right, right out the gates. And that's really, you know, commendable again, leadership and you're part of that leadership as well, Chad. Uh, it really is quite impressive and really like exciting and energizing for like, what is first year going to look like? It's, it's going to be fun. How pumped are you? I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm super excited. We, you know, we were able to get um, several local, um, local athletes in, in, as well. And so that's been, that's been a big deal. I know uh, Colonel Mullahan really pointed that out, um, you know, recently, um, um, how much it meant to, to him to, to tap into the, the local high school here and, and um, you know, some things that maybe they haven't done as much since, um, um, so in the past. And um, so track and field's already kind of opened up the doors from, um, so for some kids around that, that otherwise maybe, um, they wouldn't have had opportunity to um, or feel like they could have come to a place like MMI. And so, um, you know, because we are different and, you know, you do wear the uniform, you do do, you know, it is the marching, it is the, you know, it's the discipline and the leadership side of the military, even if you're not going military. Um, but it's very doable. Um, you know, Colonel Mullahan said the other day in a speech to the parents, there's nothing here that, that you can't do. There's nothing here that any of these people can't do um, that are coming through here. And he's, and he's right. I mean, that's, you know, um, they're they're more than capable everything that you're not asked to do anything so crazy that you know um that you can't do it so um but you know with his leadership and dr ivy's leadership and and there's all kinds of other things happening on campus you know we're building a new um, math and science building and press box for softball and you know there's a lot of things happening and over the course of the next couple of years we'll you know you know probably hope you know i think the plan is to get the track resurfaced and then at that point we'll lay a high jump apron and, and everything at the same time and um, and put put the surface over the um, uh, areas for the you know long and triple and stuff as well because you know I was trying to I, I thought you know kind of frugal in some things too and I understand that we can't just jump and you know spend all the money in the in the front end and so you know I was like look we can get a rollaway runway from you know and we order a rollaway runway on top of the concrete for a couple of years and then when we come in to resurface and realign realign the track we can bring in all and we can just do it all at once to have have the high jump apron out on the, out in the center and because. You know, we, we were thinking about putting the discus and, um, you know, which we don't really have the area. We're going to have to figure out something as far as hammer goes. If we're going to try to train hammer very, very well, but um, um, for the space and the liability. But um, we were figuring out areas for discus and shot. It was like, you know, one thing we we've started doing last year. Um, they started the HBCU um, football um, like showcase thing that they do. And it's for for like NFL scouts to come and like a big deal. And it's blown up. We're doing that again this coming year. We're hosting that again in, in December. And so they'll all come on the campus and, and the NFL teams, you know, you know, give money or give um, support that, you know, they're kind of backing that with jerseys and different things. So um, so they still are using that stadium for football, you know, at least once a year for, you know, at least the next couple of years. And so um, so we had that in mind and trying to make sure that we place things, you know, where it would be, you know, out of, you know, out of their way, but also, you know, um, conducive to what we're doing and, you know, and being able to, you know, utilize that, you know, to the best of our ability. And, um, you know, so it's, you know, everybody's been on, been on the same page and we kind of, you get, you get everybody working in unison. And, um, and so um, it's been, uh, it's been good. I, you know, it's, been, I'm excited about the growth, like you talked about, you know, I, um, I guess, you know, for me, it's super exciting because I've been a part of, of being cut, you know, so, um, and so when you've seen that side of it and you've been on, on that end, you know, to get to be a part of a new, new growth, it, it really, you know, it did really make um, a lot of things come full circle for me. And, um, you know, and it, you know, you know, you look back over the last 10, 20 years and, um, and you understand more now why things happened the way they did. And, you know, you, you know, and, and you, I, I know I don't regret any of it. I think that there was a reason for it. Um, and so, um, and there's been positive, you know, um, positive uh, impacts, you know, overall, you know, from, from everything that's actually happened. So, um, because I think about the moves I've made and the places I've been, I wouldn't like, well, if I hadn't did this, I wouldn't know this person or I wouldn't know that person. And, you know, and like, I can't, I can't imagine that, you know, being any different than it is now. Yeah. I have this picture, you know, as we wrap up today here, Chad, as we've gone through your journey and just thinking about now where you're at today, like I had this picture of like this treasure map, you know, the, the old school treasure map that has the, you know, the winding road and the dead ends and the backtracks and then X marks the spot, you know, the, the treasure. And it feels like 
MMI and your position now is the treasure. And there's this, just this amazing tapestry, this amazing backstory of getting there ups and downs. Uh, certainly you've had your share of downs and thank goodness, you know, you mentioned your wife, Natasha, you've had a lot of ups as well with this adventure. And it just feels like, you know, the journey to where you are today uh, is really special. You know, all of it culminates together. Uh, and it's really a story of, of people. You know, you started the, this interview off today talking about the people that you surround yourself. So that was one of the first things you said today. And that has borne out through each one of your story or through each one of your stops, the people that, that helped along the way and that you were able to help along the way. You know, if I were to interview people along that journey, they would, they would flip that story to you. It's like, oh yeah. And then what, you know, I had Chad, I, I could see Ken Cox talking about, yeah. And I had Chad on staff and man, it was just so awesome to be able to just trust him and he could just get his thing done on the jumps. And what an amazing person. It was great to recruit with him. Like we were just in step, like, you know, the impact that you have made on others, as well as the impact that others have made on you, man. And I'm just super excited that X marks the spots, the treasure, you, you know, your home is what it feels like here at MMI, uh, growing things in a track and field program, great people around you with the Colonel and Dr. Ivy and, uh, you know, the new coach here, uh, Malik, it just, it's really special to see what you're going to build right there at Marion Military Institute. I'm super excited about, you know, interviewing you again in five, 10 years and talking about this time period that you have here and what's, uh, you know, the, the special things that you're going to build and the people, the people that you're going to impact on a daily basis. Right. Well, I think, you know, and, and, and just kind of tie, tie into that, you know, I, you know, you talk, I, you know, I know I, I do talk about people and I, you know, I think um, you know, I, to my athletes, I talk about how, you know, they're going to get, um, obviously their academics is more, most important, but, the, you know, and, and the athletic side of things too, but, you know, they're going to get the relationships that they build out, you know, th that's going to be what carries, carries them five, 10, 20 years down the road. That's what they're going to remember the relationships with teammates and coaches and professors. And, you know, like so much has changed in my life over the last, you know, several years. And like, you know, Natasha and I are not together anymore. We're not married anymore, but we're good friends. And we, acknowledge the fact of how important we were to each other's lives right. over the course of the last 13, 14 years. And so, you know, I know she feels that way. I know I do. And um, because there was a ton of growth in, in, in a ton of growth during that span. And so, you know, and, it, and it's something that, you know, for something to start in, you know, my high school days with, you know, and, and having the support of my, you know, my mom and dad and sister and, you know, and it kind of starting from there and, you know, and, you know, even last night, like mom, you know, mom and dad, they're to this day, they still come to meets, you know, they, yeah. they, you know, they, you know, any meet that they can come to, um, they're going to be there. And, you know, they, they traveled with me. I went on that recruiting trip for two and a half weeks back in May and mom and dad are retired. Now they jumped, you know, they rode with me and, and we went all the way to, you know, to California, Oregon and back. And, you know, so, you know, so it was awesome to be able to put them at dad's done the trip like that a couple of times, but, you know, mom, mom probably got to go this time because she's retired now as well. And, you know, just, just amazing. And I, it means the world to me. And, 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 but I think that, you know, the, the impact and, you know, and I hope that, I hope that, uh, I hope and pray that, you know, that I've had the impact anywhere remotely on my student athletes and, you know, up to this point and in the future. Um, and then also on other people as, as much so as, as the people in my life have, have, have poured into me and, and that kind of thing, because, um, uh, I've grown a lot and, you know, um, I just said this again the other day to somebody and because I bring up uh, Lou Holtz, both his books, I, I've read, you know, to how many times. And one of the things that, that he says is, you know, everybody has someone to, to thank for, for his for his or her successes in life. Like none of us, you know, and me and somebody the other day were talking about the fact that none of us got here by, the, by ourselves. If anybody tells you you got there, you got here alone, they're lying. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're the president or if they're the um, the CEO of the biggest company in the world or whatever, like somebody, if it wasn't a parent or guardian, it was a coach, a mentor, a, a pastor, a something, a, a, a spouse, whatever, somebody along the way and, you know, helped, you know, help get you where you are today. And, and, and I'm sure there's a whole long, long laundry list of people that I could think. And, um, you know, and I'm, I'm very, it would take me forever to get through all the names that, that I'm thankful for. And, you know, it starts with, people I grew up with and, you know, my family and, and then, and, and then my college, you know, roommates and, um, you know, and, and teammates through, through the years and then, and then colleagues and stuff as well. So, 
Um, and, and then all, you know, obviously the athletes, if it weren't for the athletes, you know, we wouldn't be doing this. So, um, but it's, a uh, it's been a journey so far and, and, and I do, and I am very blessed to be where I'm, where I'm at. Cause this is very unique. This is a super unique area, a super unique situation. Um, and, you know, and I look back even now, you know, going in, and starting the fourth year and, and I can't believe that I even considered not applying for the position, <laughs> you know, like, you know, what a stupid move that would have been, you know, so. Um, but, um, but yeah, that would, that would not have been, that would, that would have definitely been one I might have, I would probably regret it. I, I don't know that I would have ever known the difference, but, um, but yeah, that would, uh, that was sort of, um, uh, that would have been a uh, different uh, uh, turn of events for sure. Well, I agree with you hundred percent, my friend, you know, we stand on the backs and shoulders of others that came before us. Uh, and it's our responsibility to then have others stand on our backs and our shoulders. And you're certainly a great example of that with the, the many lives that you've touched so far. The cool thing is you're just getting started. You're still a youngin. <laughs> you've got well, many, many years to go, I, my friend. I don't know, Mike, I get, I get older by the day. I'll, if, if, if the Lord, let, if good Lord lets me live, I'll be 39 in November, uh, November 1st. And so, um, I, I remember when I turned 39 a long time ago, <laughs> I thought I was getting old too, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, um, but you know, it just depends on, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, like the song goes, I, I still feel 25 most of the time, you know, I guess, uh, but, um, but it's, uh, it, it's amazing how fast the years go by. Um, you know, I know, um, um, but, but it's been fun. I know, you know, when Matt and Keith and I were on the track at in Eugene the other day, we were discussing that, like, that's the first time the three of us have been on a, on a track together in over 21 years. And um, of all places, we're at the world championships for the first time on American soil. So that was, um, that was pretty phenomenal. And, um, but you know, it, um, it's amazing how fast years, years go by. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And it's going to be, it's going to fly by here coming up soon and just excited to see the, all the uh, accolades and the people that you touch over the next few years, my friend. Uh, hey man, Chad, you know, one of the most important and expensive and grateful things you can ever give me and Gil Athletics is your time. And so I'm really just so thankful for you to come down and sit down with us here today and talk about really an amazing uh, journey. Again, that that Pirates treasure map and uh, just really excited for what you got going on here and for your future. And uh, again, just so thankful that you would share your value. There's uh, you know hundreds and hundreds of people will listen to this and get a lot of value out of your story, a lot of encouragement. Uh, someone is going to reach out to someone at convention that they they wouldn't have but now they will because of your advice my friend and that that means you've affected more people's lives that, than you'll ever know uh out there so again chad thank you so much for being here today really do appreciate you and excited for you thanks mike i appreciate you and um i honored to do this and you know if i can be of any help uh you know obviously let me know and you know, we've known each other a long time and and you're a huge you're a huge asset to to the coaches and the things you're doing with this and um, Gill Athletics and, and and everything that you pour into you pour in it you pour into people you know just like any the rest of us and so um, and that's what um, that's what matters that's what's gonna that's what's gonna get us through that's right man thank you man appreciate you have an awesome day thanks man you too.